Hello, everybody. I, uh, I'm sorry, I'm plugging in my headphones still. Hello, everyone. Clack Cat is back, baby. What's up, Manoli? Good to see you, brother. How is everyone? Hey, baby. What's up, chat? Good to see y'all. There we go. No more noise. No more noise for my speakers. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? We forgot something here, chat. I've made a, I've made a classic mistake. Classic, classic mistake. We can fix this, though. We can fix this, chat. Don't you worry. I almost forgot how we start every Friday stream. I almost forgot. Chat, you know what time it is. We'll need to turn this down for a second. And we'll need to, we'll need to turn this up. I think this needs to be turned up a little bit. You ready, chat? Every time. It never gets old. It's Friday then and Saturday, Sunday. What? It's Friday? Then Saturday, Sunday? You know what time it is, chat. Let's go. Let's go. I need to get an actual I need to get like an actual screen set up for that so that it's just like every Friday stream. I just have it ready. That's what we need to do. Alright, that's a little loud. There we go. How's music volume chat? Did I just ruin it? I think we're good. Oh, ho, ho, ho. do we have a fun build tonight? Yo, chat, are you ready? We got unboxings first, and then a build. How is everybody? Agent Hubcap, good to see you. Crystal, Crystal MK, someone else's key. Danny Boy, I already acknowledged you, Manoli, but what's up, brother? We got Nick Jimstrap in here. Alex, good to see you. So Alex is going to be hanging out with us here for some portions of the evening, maybe the whole evening. I don't know, but Alex is part of Team Protozoa Studio. Super stoked on this build tonight, chat. So stoked. That gaff mat is so nice. What? <laughs> you know what? We might give one we might give one of these away for Christmas. Or the holidays. Not just Christmas. Happy Hanukkah to everyone who celebrates that. Started uh, started yesterday, right? Hello everyone. Welcome. Welcome to a Friday edition of Max F Live. We are rocking and rolling. Oh, okay, nice. Is it microwave? Microwave is part of Protozoa as well. What's well, good? We got Protozoa up in the house. We are we are gonna be killing it tonight. Look at this chat. Ooh, we got the switches ready to go. I was like able to finish these just in time, so we don't have to tune any switches tonight. It's done. <laughs> what up, OG Kit? Friday night, that's what's up. Oh, Microwave, thank you so much for the tier one. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. Good to see everyone, though. How was your week? Tell me. What have we got going on? As you can see, I still have the light box right here behind me, unfortunately. We, uh, we've not received our tube light quite yet, but Hopefully we'll be installing that by Monday's stream. We'll see. Whoa, oh, where's the sunglasses and trench coat? I know. I know. I know. I actually was storming around today. And I I had that on my mind. However, there was just no time. There was just no time. I wanted to get out of the office. I actually had to go on to client site today. And I wanted to get out of the office at like 2. And I didn't get up out of there until like 4 and uh, my in-laws are in town. And so um, we've, been, we've been social 
distancing with them this whole this whole summer and year so that's not a big deal but it's just needless to say very busy around the house best laid plans sometimes things just don't work out but you know what we're Lawrence Fishburne in spirit tonight Neo Neo I came in expecting full-on Neo outfit, Agent Huff Cap, I know. I feel like I've let you down. But you know what? We do have the Matrix. We are featuring the Matrix tonight. Don't you worry. We've still got plenty of Matrix theme going on this evening. And trust me, you will not be disappointed. From start to finish, we have got Matrix theme on this entire board. I know. Well, goodwill though during a, a during a global pandemic. I don't know if I'd trust that. I was just gonna grab like I was gonna grab the closest thing to like some Matrix attire that I had in my house and some like old sunglasses. I I thought at one point I had sunglasses that didn't like the Lauren like the straight up Morpheus glasses that didn't have like the frame going back. That would have been like spot on. Um, but it's all good. It's all good, chat. So, uh, so yeah, let's convert over here to the keyboard screen. Alrighty. As you can see we've got our switches here this evening. Ready to rumble, all lubed up. And look at these. We have some, uh, we have some fancy pants switches, some Evo 1 switches that we might just put on the scroll lock and caps lock. I haven't decided yet. You'll need them for that glow, I know, right? Ah, what's going on? Is it is it you is it Yulium? Yulium? So these are a crazy switch. These Lumia, these Lumia switches. Have you seen these chat? I didn't tune these ones up or anything. Those things have some pop to them. Yeah, those things have some pop. Here's what we're... There's the muted that we're building with tonight, and here's the Lumias. <laughs> kind of a stark difference there. But yeah, we might put these on, like... Because these, like, kind of contrast so nicely. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe we'll put them on, like, an accent key. I'm so hyped. This has been a long work week. I still have to work 10 hours tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Well, at least you don't have to wake up that early, though, for it, OGK. Sorry to hear that, man. And I know sometimes, sometimes it do be like that, though. But you'll make it through. So welcome, everybody. For those of you tuning in for the first time to my stream, welcome. We've got a very special build planned for tonight. You can catch all the details on this build here by hitting exclamation point build. Also, a reminder that this, while we are not using them, this is also kind of a fun opportunity to, to chill the Nightwalker switches. Nightwalker switches are in group by right now. They are closing out tonight. Now I cannot vouch for them. I have not tried these switches, um, but they, they're Durox and they glow in the dark. So, I mean, you know, what's, uh, what's not to like about that? So, Give them a try if you're into that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, Protozoa Studios was kind enough to reach out and give me the opportunity to build quite a fun board here. So we've got the full Matrix theme. We're going to get into the unboxing here for everything right now without further ado. Because I do not want to be streaming all Friday night. I need to wake up early tomorrow and help out my wife with a million things so here we go of course for any matrix themed build we gotta roll with the gmk terminal keycap set so i mean come on there's there's nothing else that would have been acceptable here so don't you worry we've got we've got keycaps on lock for tonight so it's coming won't even get into the unboxing there you guys know what terminal looks like so it's it's coming yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, William, William says, "We are you? Are you French?" I had no idea. It's got to be very late there, or or early, depending on how you look at it. So here is 
our box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Um, chat. <laughs> We've unboxed this a couple times, but it is a fun unboxing every time. It's just such a nice, such a nice little package here that they sent over to us. We got the Everglide. I believe these are Everglides. Everglide stabilizers. There we go. I guessed correctly, William. And so here we go. Dear Max, thanks for agreeing to build our experimental 90s themed Matrix Hacker Hangul Blade Runner Mysterium TKL. Now, obviously, that was too long for me to put in one Twitch title. So what if I condense it into, I think I said Matrix. I think I said Matrix Mysterium TKL. So that gets the point across generally. Wait until you see what this thing looks like. Anyways, they're calling this the P00-M Glitch. So we're gonna refer to it as the Glitch TKL. Let's go. Fair warning, there is some scuffage. Mainly a fun concept, so thanks for being a good sport about it. And thank you, chat, for being a good sport about it. But I'm pretty sure you're not gonna be disappointed with anything in here. Enclosed, you will find an acrylic stacked case. Clearly, let's go. Engravings have GID infill, but the malfunction resulted, or the installation or manufacturing, I, 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 can't, I can't really read with the why here, I'm just illiterate. Um, it resulted in some, in some scratches and a cloudy acrylic. Wait until you see it. I don't think it's that cloudy. It looks pretty mwah, to me. If you're super nitpicky, you'll see a little bit, but acrylic cases, they just be like that though. Stainless plate. And somehow the man you did miss a hole on that, so we had to dremel a hole in the stainless plate. They took care of that for me. I believe Ecto did that. Shout out to Ecto. I do not think he's online tonight, but he is also part of the Protozoa team. So big shout out to Ecto. He was the one who originally reached out to me, and, and everyone I've talked to so far from Protozoa has been super helpful and awesome. Um, so, uh, so anyways, they dremeled the hole in the plate, um, and unfortunately the palm plate, we had a black palm plate with this build, and unfortunately that did get scratched up quite a bit. Um, and so I do believe we're just gonna be building on the steel plate tonight. Um, there's hardware and a massive black light included. So once once we look at this thing here tonight, I will plug in the black light and we'll take a look at this. Um, and then uh, of course the star of the show, they say the star of the show, I think the star of the show, well, I mean, both are incredible. The Mysterium PCB is incredible, really, really nice. Hunter went ahead and put together the forehead of the Mysterium for us. So we do not need to worry about doing all of those through whole components. Thank goodness. And uh, and it's, uh, this is funny, it's been wiped down with antivirus wipes. <laughs> Have fun and thanks again. Um, and, uh, and so yeah, so here's a little PS. If people do like the design, a few will be made available. Now, I have details to share with you, chat, about what's being made available um, and, and what you can expect, probably. Um, Ecto was talking to me a bit earlier today. I do believe he's asleep right now, but he was talking to me earlier today, so I, I have some fun things to share. We'll get into that in just a second. So, yeah, big shout out to the Protozoa guys. Thank you so much. We've got some fun some fun gummies here's our hardware for the build tonight we will uh we will put that aside here's a protozoa pin now this is just a pin this isn't actually part of the 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 keyboard but yeah how cool is that it's a pretty pretty nice pin is this one for you ulium that's a that's a lapel piece right there and then yeah we've got we got Veggie Colin the Caterpillar and Percy Pig. Merry Persimus, everyone. Timing by MK Bioclock woke me up right on time. 0350 here. Ooh. There you go. Well that is that is quite early. Who is that? Who is Tur Turambar? Turambarnet. Welcome. I'm glad you're able to join us here this evening. You are just in time. We are just unboxing. About to get to the main event. So here is here is the the FR4. This is the acrylic, the black palm, excuse me, black palm plate. We're not going to be building on this one tonight. Um, so I'm going to just put that aside. But you all have seen black palm plates before. Nothing new there. And here is the star of the show. Chad, are you ready for this? Wait until you 
you see this? Oh, lordy. Ready? One, two, three, go. Boom. Hmm. Just drink that in, chat. Just drink that in. So you can see the cloudiness that he was talking about up here, but that is nitpicking. It's layered on all the different pieces of acrylic, the typing or the, the infill. And so you have, just like the matrix, you have that three dimensional text. It is absolutely awesome. We have indeed entered the matrix. Whatever pill it was, blue pill, red pill, we took the right one, or the wrong one, depending upon your, your, your thought process. If it were me, I'd have taken whatever pill kept me in the matrix. I don't want to know. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh, beautiful. So this is the combo this is uh, Protozoa's logo, and then Uliam's, Uliam's logo, right? Isn't that you, Uliam? It's a pretty cool combination here on this puppy. Looking really good. So the first thing we need to do here for tonight, um, I want to take a look at the PCB, and uh, we'll just go acrylic layer by acrylic layer. We have four of these. Uh, hex screws that we need to uh, to unscrew to get at it here. Anytime you're working with acrylic, the key to it is try to avoid fingerprints to the extent you can. Um, fingerprints are just going to kind of come on a stacked acrylic layers. Um, you just kind of have to abrase it to an extent, but to the extent you can, try to avoid it. So let me see what I can get going on here, if I can get this out. There might be a couple of uh, moments here in chat where you see me doing this with bad angles. I do apologize for that. Acrylic layers are sometimes just a little bit difficult to, to work with. And I just want to be able to get it at a good angle to where I can get everything out properly without scratching anything. So thank you for your patience in advance tonight. Such hackers, such wow. <laughs> Little doge action. Oh, OGK, go for it. You said you don't have to wake up early, so go for it. But, you know, myself and the rest of chat, we're all just enablers. You should know the answer you're going to get if you ask chat. Where was this available? So, uh, Sin is it Sinpa? Uh, this is um, this is actually a one-off right now that we're working with. Um, however, I will share details here with you in just a moment. Let me go ahead and get to the PCB. I've kind of got my hands full here. As soon as I get these stacked acrylic layers apart, um, I can uh, I can open up and share with you guys some of the details that Ecto sent me here tonight that that might reveal to y'all a little bit more of what we're looking like in terms of a potential buy for this type of a, a board. So bear with me for just another moment here. I just wanna get these stacked pieces here taken apart. Acrylic cases when I'm taking them apart require my attention. Else you run the risk of scratching things. Okay. 
that is now unstacked at this point. We should be good there. Okay, so let me share with you real quick, chat, what Ecto shared with me. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we can go from there. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna go over um, a couple of images. I'm opening them up right now. I just don't wanna share a whole Discord uh, DM with you guys. Uh, okay, here we go. All right, chat, here we go. All right, so to start, for details on this keyboard, for information on where to find it, um, and, 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 and all that sort of thing. Um, so here we are. This is the information from Ecto himself from earlier tonight. Um, so let me see if I can get this. Can I go over to the right a little bit? I'm sorry, I can't really. There we go, that, that's a good view. All right, so uh, the proposed protection model is slightly different um, than the one-off that we're building here tonight. Um, so he's laid out the specs here for us, um, and, uh, and as appropriate, I think it is appropriate to share with you since you guys are asking. Um, so, so the main changes are that we'll use a CNC process for the production model, which will allow us to round off some of the edges, countersink the hardware and bump-ons, and allows us to embed our badge, etc. So there you go, wait until you see the images on the embedding of the badge, it looks Primo. Um, the other thing is that we've modified the layer so that standoff pillars can be installed a bit easier. So you'll notice I might struggle with pulling uh, the pillars out. At, well, I pulled them out. I might struggle with installing the pillars back in. The, the way this TKL works right now is the layers are stacked like this. Kind of going up in like a stepped way so that it like ramps up a little bit. I believe it'll be flatter, more cut off. So anyways, here's the details of the ones we're building tonight. This is the glitch that we're building tonight. In acrylic, uh, an acid green edge glow acrylic layers, three millimeter acrylic plate. However, we're using the stainless steel plate tonight. Uh, the etched Hangul matrix rain, uh, the glitched side profiles, which if you didn't see that, I will zoom in on this view down here in just a minute and you can see those side profiles. If you're full screen right now, you might be able to catch a little bit of how it's a little bit edged differently. Um, it was cut with CNC, uh, including a countersunk hardware um, and soft round edges on the top and bottom. The, that's that layered point where it like kind of goes up like this, as I told you. Um, this is what we're seeing here. Now, the P.00 Mysterium. This is what we might be looking at in terms of a buy. Um, I would assume the glitch is going to be more of the one-off. And so sandblasted polycarbonate frosted layers, top layer is clear, 1.5 millimeter, more closer to a standard plate, um, cut with CNC, and it'll include the countersunk hardware, soft rounded edges on the top and bottom, just as you're seeing here. The sides will be flat, I would assume. Um, and then you'll have interchangeable and collectible badges, which will be kind of cool. Um, that will work across the entire range of it. Um, and uh, Oh, and the glitch will be part of the buy as well if there's enough interest. Oh, there we go. Um, there we go, there we go. Well, yeah, you heard it here first from Alex. I assumed that the glitch was going to be the one-off. So, so yeah, you might see the glitch. You might see this board right here available for group buy if you guys in chat speak up enough and say, Hey, Protozoa, let's go. Get it going. Uh, this does not have Alps compatibility. The Mysterium PCB is MX only. Now, uh, here are the renders. These are the renders of the regular version. Let me begin by opening those up. Here is, here is, here is the top down. Now let me zoom in. Let me zoom in way big so you can see there's the the cool Mysterium forehead, 
you can see the stacked layers. It's hard to see the soft round edge on the back, but there's the logo there. So this is where you would have the drop-in point for the logos, which you can see and see. It's easier to see the soft edge stack on the front here. And you can see what the side profiles look like there as well. There you go. So there you go, there's what, there's what that render looks like. And then here is a close-up on the side profile and front profile how it's kind of like edged like that's pretty pretty fancy and then you can see again here on the close-up with the the logo here very nice very nice very nice indeed very nice indeed we're turning slowly slowly ever ever so slowly into michael kine because protozoa is predominantly out of the UK we will talk like this just for a brief moment and say if you are interested go to Protozoa studio and look at this place would you please look at this master Wang master Wang all right we're done with that all right we are done with that <laughs> It's not the greatest impression. Michael Caine is not my best. I used to be pretty good at Michael Caine, but after all the years of the cigars and the brandy, I'm no more. No more. <laughs> Best Australia. Every accent just ends up sounding like an Australian accent. I'm sorry. Jax, you found, my, you found me out. You found me out. The jig is up. Or Jamaican. Oh, God. <laughs> it's getting worse. Um, all right, so we're stacked acrylic layers are all squared away and again I'll show you that side profile real quick. I don't have anything holding these guys in So I want to be careful not to shift the acrylic around too much, but look at those side profiles. Would you please? Okay now top layer Boom So cool. All right, I'm gonna lay this down here on the bubble wrap Little blanket of bubble wrap on the floor. There we go. That's more. That's more British. That's like Cheerio biscuits, cheat or gravy. <laughs> what is it? Toast and gravy. <laughs> whatever. Whatever Brits do with with gravy on their toast. Look at that. CNC must be working overtime cutting those characters. Oh my god. Yeah, beans beans and toast. Okay. Now, here is the plate, as you can see, where we had a little Dremel action there in the middle. But aside from that, chat, you can see. Can you see my camera? There's my camera. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. We will need that sooner rather than later. And then, yeah, we can kind of slide this guy just right out. Just pick him out of here. The Mysterium. That's such a cool finish too on this PCB. Ooh. So nice. So nice. I'm gonna try and keep all of these layers together for the most part. We'll see if I can accomplish that. I'm not quite sure if I'll be able to. Okay, so now as you probably know, more times than not, your PCB will have diodes and resistors right by the through holes. However, on this guy, oh, Hunter, 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 beautiful work. Beautiful work, if I do say so. I'm not sure who's responsible for this. Hunter, quote unquote, is what they wrote on the, is what they wrote on it. And yeah, it is. Look at that chat. Look at all that tiny little through hole work. 
And so all of your diodes and resistors, everything is all ran to the top. And you have just a clean, oh, microwave is Hunter. Very cool, thanks you, Alex. So all the traces are just ran up here to the forehead. And uh, yeah, you just have this cool, like, what is the Mysterium effect here? What is this, uh, what is this silk screen that they have on it? It's pretty cool though. And then the protozoa, the protozoa badges on the top uh, left and right. Pretty darn cool, Mysterio. So. That all squared away and ready to be worked on. It is time, chat, for us to begin work on the stabilizers. It is, it is. I was so nervous. Here's a little quick little story about these Kiwis chat. I had about 50 left over from the last time I built uh, with, uh, with these switches. And I actually had to get rush ordered the last 30 we needed for this build. They made it today at 12 noon is when these got dropped off. Absolutely insane. I was so nervous. All right, I'm going to grab my map. Oh my goodness, they have got the TV loud in the background. Sorry about that, Jeff. They've got that quite loud indeed. Quite loud indeed. I thought I'd wipe this down. I still have a little bit of resin on this. And so, chat, we're gonna take a quick one minute break. I'm gonna wipe down this giant blue mat that we're about to work on here. Grab a drink, hit up the restroom. We will be back to tune some stabilizers for this build in just a moment.
turn the volume down. Just like snuck in there. Snuck in there like ninja, turned the volume down and then dipped. Alright. Ah, talking details on pricing. Yeah. Yeah, no, we don't have any details on pricing yet, or at least nothing that I've been provided. Alex is kind of confirming that as well. Um, so, so yeah, stay tuned. Um, you know, I would, I would assume it would be, yeah, I would assume it would be more affordable though. Um, so, that's the coolest PCB. You should have Yeah, it is pretty. It is pretty unique, isn't it? So, definitely. How much more rigid would it end up being? Are we talking? Um, Carbon fiber, uh, acrylic like, won't crack. I mean, unless you're being really tough on the board, unless you're getting like gamer rage out on your keyboard, like an acrylic stacked board, I would not recommend for doing that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll, like for every day wear and tear, you're not gonna have an issue with an acrylic stacked PCB. You'll be, you'll be totally fine. So don't, don't worry about that. Polycarbonate versus acrylic. Um, yeah, the durability factor on uh, the difference there. Um, okay, so the one thing I didn't confirm yet, this is a standard uh, layout. Alex, do you know, or Uliam, are you here? Since this keyboard is for you, uh, did you have a layout that you had identified already? Are we doing a 7U? Looks like we have a cutout here for Do we know? Do we know, chat, what we're doing here for layout? Alex, do you have any idea? Okay. Hey, Keystream. Um, the on chat module, I believe, is from a overlay called Focus, if I'm not mistaken. Focus, I do believe, was the name of the module. All right, so we'll for sure need to do all these housings, obviously, and then it's just to decide between whether we're doing the 7U or the 6.25. Yeah, I might have, I might have modified it a little bit um, to to bring it up to this sort of spec. Um, I played with that whole suite uh, for some time, um, so yeah, it might it might look a little bit different. Do the seven U, brilliant. Are we doing a? Are we doing the classy Sagan Sagan layout? One point five one one point five seven U. One point five one one point five. That's what I'm assuming now at this point. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, chef. Kiss indeed. Are my better TTV emotes working tonight? Do you guys see that in chat? Because I don't I don't see them. They normally pop up in my overlay and it doesn't look like they're working right now. Yeah, why are they not? I don't know why that's happening. I wonder if my I wonder if my overlays better TTV is having an issue or if my or if my chat overlay is having an issue. Are my emotes working? If you use my Twitch emote, is that working? Raz would troubleshoot if he were here. What did I miss here? Yeah, so that's working. I wonder if it's just better TTV tonight that's not working, having a little bit of difficulty. I wonder. Yeah, normally the cat, I wasn't seeing the cat jam working either. Normally I see that working too. We had a cat jam coming up when we were doing the Mufasa video earlier. God, I love that video. That dude is just how I try and live every day. Nothing but good vibes. Mufasa, if you guys did, if you guys do know who I'm talking about, that guy is actually local to me. 
he lives like within like 10 miles of me. Kind of crazy. Chat, chat, chat. Feel free to ask me any questions, you guys, um, and gals, potentially. Um, who, who am I kidding? I looked at my analytics, and I think I'm like 99% in favor of having guys watch my stream. I know, I was. it was YouTube. It was YouTube analytics that I was looking at. So it doesn't surprise me. I pull in all the ladies on Twitch. They can't get enough of this dashing, handsome face. Alright, we're gonna zoom in here. Um, I am not, OGK, I am not out in Cali. Um, uh, did you ever come up with your most underrated gym case set? You know what, Alex? I thought about that a bit more. Um, and... It's such a good question. I, I didn't. I, I thought about it a bit more that stream, and I couldn't really come up with a good one. Um... But let's let's think on it now here. Actually, let's think on it a bit more now here. So underrated GMK sets. I think, I think the Royal Triumph Adler with the white modifiers is super underrated. I think that set looks so good on a ton of neutral boards. If you have a silver or a black or a gray board, super clean on that one. And people don't like that set. Don't mind if I contact you in Discord and ask you about the chat module. Go for it, Keystream. I will try and remember to get back to you. I do pretty good about answering DMs. I can probably I can probably send you a couple of screenshots on what the customization I've done to that module looks like. Probably something you can just copy and paste. I might even be able to I think they just do that all through HTML. I can probably just send you the code. Probably just snippet you the code there in Discord and in a quick fell swoop of copy and paste, we can get you sorted out. So I have no problem at all sharing that with you. Um, so yeah, so GMK... Ooh, is, is ASCII an underrated set though? I feel like that one's pretty... pretty good. See, I don't know too, I don't know in terms of trends, like what people would consider super like hype and not. Yeah, I wouldn't think ASCII would be too underrated. I would think people actually like that set. Um, um, I'm thinking like more older sets. Like, okay, so... And again, I don't know if this one is too... This one was underrated in its time. Nowadays, you cannot find it because it's so hot. This thing sells for like 350, 400 bucks nowadays. KA 2017. Because up until very recently, there were no really good GMK pink key sets. So GMK, or it's not even GMK, it's a cherry Cherry KA2017. Google that. You've probably, if you're newer to keyboards, you might not have even ever heard of it. I built a 910 with it. If you actually go to the images for KA2017, my 910 actually pops up. Um, yeah, so some, so people either, I feel like people either hate it or love it. So maybe that's more of a polarizing set and definitely not underrated because now the thing flies off the shelves. You cannot you cannot get it. Like if somebody posts it, it's gone within 30 seconds. Like, you know, those those 100 200 people that want that set, all their bot pings at once and everyone is like going crazy for it. Um so maybe that one's not as underrated. Um Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, GMK 9009 round one did not sell well. So technically, underrated set when it first came out. What's up, Max? What are we building tonight? Zap, what's good, brother? We are building a Mysterium TKL with a very cool 
Matrix Hangul GID infill to the case. It looks absolutely stunning. And before the end of the evening, I'm going to light it all up with the black light. We're going to do the typing test. I mean, we're just, I mean, it's just awesome. Here's the, here's part of the star of the show with the Mysterium TKL. Look at that forehead. It's insane. Yeah, too many, like, and that's the thing now. Like, with 9009, definitely not underrated anymore because people bought that thing up. Like, I think something... So, here's another set that was apparently underrated uh, in its time. Serica. When Serica was in group buy stage, nobody wanted it. Like, I remember, I remember there were memes about the only place where Serica belongs is the dumpster. And... People would post it. I would post it. I would post this image of like a yellow and black dumpster. And, and I was like, that's where Serica goes. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, Zambu, Zambu Mind showed us all that we were big dumb after after that one. Um, yeah, Calm Depths. Calm Depths did not do too well in GMK. Calm Depths was actually the first essay set that, uh, or the first key set that caught my eye and got me hunting for keyboards and key sets within the hobby. Um, I saw, one of the first things I saw was a duck blackbird with, with SA calm depths. And so, how did GMK Hammerhead do? I think, I think Hammerhead did okay. They were, that was a polarizing set as well. People either loved it or hated, I thought. Um, I don't know the exact numbers. GMK Analog Dreams, GMK Tai T. I think Analog Dreams is pretty good. I don't think people would consider Analog Dreams underrated. Tai T, maybe a little more so. Um, but I don't really, I don't follow that one enough to actually, to give an opinion on it. I can't, I can't visualize the set right now. And so, um... Yeah, Serica, I agree. With that, with that monochrome black and white and then the yellow it's just too much of a pittsburgh steelers board though and so you know while i'm not the biggest sports ball fan um you know i uh i do watch enough foosball to not like the pittsburgh steelers and so when i see that colorway that's the only thing i can think of that and that stupid uh wiz khalifa song black and yellow black and yellow Shout out to all my Wiz Khalifa fans out in the crowd that I just pissed off. <laughs> yeah, I'm more like Max of Rap. Definitely not. Definitely not something you'll see me doing too often there, Keystream. <laughs> I also really want a GMK originative Japanese. Uh, the what the the white on black, the white on black with the era the hiragana legends. If we're talking underrated key sets, still, I definitely would not say that's an underrated key set. I mean, those things fly off the shelves, and you know Nathan Kim has got the Wob Hangul set on his board on stream, and so. People buy that thing up like hotcakes. Go to go to Mech Market. You'll see a million posts of people looking for the Wab Hangul extension kit. Um, anything beige, like you know, beige. I feel like isn't necessarily underrated, but it depends on who you talk to. People could say it's underrated. Um, people either love or, or hate beige. So I wouldn't say it's an underrated thing. But here's an awesome extension kit. There's the there's the GMK Greek beige add-on kit uh, from Novel Keys, and how good does that look on my ogre? So, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's underrated. I would just say that's more polarizing. Underrated, I think of things that like people didn't have on their radar, and then all of a sudden, you know, or maybe they still don't, and all of a sudden it's awesome. And so, of course, you're gonna get like a lot of preference on this sort of topic. But I inherently think of things that do not sell well, um, that, that then people go nuts on later and after the fact, or, or don't, or still have it. 
still have it, maybe. Got nuts on it. But yeah. So Alex, it's a fun topic though. Yeah, and Duck Blackbird? Ooh, so dope. It's a great question and a fun topic to think about. Really good question. I like it. More chat, give me more. If y'all are new to if y'all are new to keyboards, by all means, any questions you have related to the hobby. We also are definitely no strangers to talking audio, video, lighting, any photography or videography in chat. We're all tech friendly here, and so just don't ask if I've been able to get a, an RTX card yet. Because, womp womp, I haven't. I'll answer that question for you now. Playing Cyberpunk on a GTX 1080. Feels bad, man. I heard that NVIDIA sold about $150 million worth of cards to miners direct. To Bitcoin miners. That they like... That they and the reason the reason it's kind of like suspected is because Nvidia's profit shares for the gaming category, which includes all of their graphics cards for, of course, the RTX gaming release, but also gaming cards are also anything sold to miners is also put into that same category according to their stock reports um, and uh, and and their numbers did not match with there was about a 150 million dollar deficit of pro, of earnings that they claimed versus cards they were physically selling to the gaming market and so and so yeah so i i would not at all be surprised um if they yeah just as you said OGK, if they sold a ton of cards to miners and they just didn't make it known I have two 2080 Ti's. It definitely feels bad when those 3090s came out. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, I don't think I don't think the benchmarks are going to maintain that level of disparity. I feel like, and I could be wrong. It might just be my memory, but I feel like new cards come out and reports always put the new card so high above current gen quote unquote um and then it levels out a bit a little bit later where you're like ah you know what there wasn't that much of a difference at all in the long run i could be wrong but that's just kind of how i felt about it um my perspective i just bought a tub of lube finally i won't need to use a small container that's a nice feeling the five milliliter containers that i use are pretty nice um and they are, they are technically a tub. This is a tiny little tub. But yeah, those little, those, do you remember those little vials from Switch Mod? Those were tough. Those little three milliliter vials. GMK Striker, GMK Botanical. I hope you're not talking about key sets that are underrated. Because GMK Tifu is probably the most hyped up keycap set on the face of the planet. Everyone wants that. Intel makes new CPUs that do nothing. <laughs> I have to say, Intel is getting buried. I converted over to AMD myself. So I am an AMD boy nowadays. Although I'm not on the newest architecture, I converted over to AMD with a 3950. And so it is a workhorse. I have not seen more than 10% utilization on my CPU ever. And I have streamed multiple things. I've had, I've been, I've had like multiple streams open. I've been like encoding things. I've been like, I've been uh, uh, importing things into, uh, into like editing applications, like actively. Uh, it's just absurd. Like the CPU, like my computer will crash on the graphics side. 10 times over before my CPU will. And I can be running like CPU intensive threads, the graphics card will die before my CPU will. Not that it happens because again, none of these things that I just went over are graphically heavy unless, you know, and I, I don't do fusion. I don't do like rendering stuff. And so, you know, that's not graphically, that's graphically heavy stuff. My stuff is all like production stuff, post-production stuff, you know. Working, working in Lightroom with 
a million spot removals on a on an 8k on an 8k photo you know what I mean that stuff that stuff would delay on my old PC and the the 3950 destroys it wasn't GMK Tfue slept on when it first came out oh keystream you bring up a good point I think I think striker was in fact uh, a little bit of a sleeper set when it was in group by and then and then yeah now people now people can't get it Yep, it, it did. You're absolutely right. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. So yeah, that might just be the most underrated GMK set of all time. I go from saying, nope, you're wrong, to you're absolutely right, and that might be the best example of it. Is that an underrated set, though? Or is it just the Tifu effect? Because... Ask yourself honestly, if you eyed up that set in group by, if you were one of the people that eyed that set up in group by, did your opinion really change on it after you saw Tifu stuff, or did you just maybe buy in a little bit more into the hype? Or maybe you're just like, nah, I still don't like that set. Dead. Didn't Tifu say he had the most expensive keyboard in the world, even though it was only $3,800? I mean, maybe. I... I, I don't know though, I mean, who would have taken that seriously though, you know? I mean, for all, you know, for all respects, or for all intents and purposes, um, you know, for Tifu's audience, sure, whatever, he could have said he did. I mean, everyone else is going to get blown away by an almost $4,000 keyboard. No one in his audience knows anything about OTD, you know what I mean? Like, it's just not... It's not something they're they're tracking. All right, so we need to use the seven U spacebar. I love simple sets, single color with single color legends. I hear you, Alex. I'm all about that life. I'm all about that life. And just colors we haven't seen. There's so many. There's so many Pantones we just haven't seen yet. Like uh, like here's a good example. I think this one will actually be a sleeper set. I think this is an incoming underrated set. I could be wrong. But I think people like green. GMK Nuclear Data. I think GMK Nuclear Data will be a sleeper set because that did not do necessarily well in group buy. But I think people will start to see that on keyboards and they'll be like, oh shit, I missed a good one here. Um, Red Cadet? Or Crimson Cadet, you mean? Crimson Cadet is pretty damn good. And yeah, I'd say underrated. I'd say underrated. I see Crimson Cadet, I'm like, ooh, beautiful. But more times than not, like, you know, you don't see it that often. And, and more times than not, you know, it's not the hyped set that people are talking about. Uh, what was the one that What was the one that was kind of similar to Crimson Cadet that was just all Russian legends? Um, it was sold on Project Keyboard. I should know this one. I have a set of it coming. Uh, it's also red. Uh, chat, help me out. I'm, I'm missing it. Um, I didn't like the shade of green on nuclear data. I can understand that, Senpa. I can understand that. And I could be wrong. You know, I could be wrong. People might not People might not go for it. Um, you know, but I, I like it. I like it, you know, and I love supporting Heine, so I picked it up for sure. Um, Perestroika. Yes, exactly, Isashu. Perestroika, GMK Perestroika. You have to say it like this, comrade. This is my bad Russian accent, comrade. Oh wait, I'm doing two wires at once. I don't wanna do that. I wanna put this in first and then we will do the other side. Not into red sets, but Perestroika is a pretty nice set. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I read everything else completely normal except the word. Not into red sets, but Perestroika is a pretty nice set. <laughs> I didn't think I was into the hobby when that set was being run, though. You didn't know. You didn't know just how far down the rabbit hole you were going to fall. He's a shoe, did you? Now you're one of us. One of us. What do you think of Yuri round two? Doesn't look like it's doing well this time. Um, Yuri's a tough set. 
Yuri's a tough set. Um, I don't see too many boards that Yuri works well with, aside from the very classically colored ones, i.e. your blacks and grays, really. Silver doesn't work, I don't think, as well with Yuri. And then when you put it into that category of classic, of sets that work best with classic colors, you have a lot of competition. A lot of competition. Like, there's boards, there's key sets that just do better with a classically colored board. You know, that they're so wild that they just do better with a classically colored board. And Yuri is just wild enough to where you have to put it on a classic colored board. I just did the wrong orientation on this. And I will hydrate here in just a second frequency. Thank you very much for that. Give me just a moment to finish this, get this out of my hands, and we will grab a drink. Um, you know what I'm saying? I said it in kind of a weird way, but do you, you, you kind of get the drift? Yeah, I feel like I feel like that puts it in a whole bunch of sets that are brightly colored, like Analog Dreams and Vaporwave and Hyperfuse and you know those those keycaps that maybe go better with a black board. And then when you're and then when you're competing with that, it makes it it makes it difficult. Muted round two. It has been it has been some time, keyboard enthusiasts, since we've seen Muted Round Two. It's coming back, baby. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I looked actually just through my Excel the other day of some sets I've got coming in. I'm looking forward to a bunch of stuff. Um, let me go over a few of them here that we've got coming that I'm really that are really juicy that I'm looking forward to. Um, let's see here. Can I get the, there it is, there's my tracking. All right, so the sets that I've got coming in that I'm probably most looking forward to is Dracula, but they're still in color matching phase, rip. Um, Future Funk should be coming soon. That one will be pretty damn good. Um, I really like the looks of Masterpiece, Beta, and Nord. I've got all of those coming in. Um, the Laser Synthwave is a pretty cool set. That's kind of that's kind of like another one that would be in that in when it would be in that category that GMK Yuri would be fighting with those kind of wild sets that are just muted enough but also wild enough to where you need a classic simple board color to to make them work, um, and then Rouge GMK Rouge oh I'm so looking forward to that um, did I buy Noir I can't remember if I bought Noir let's see here I think I did. Did I buy Noir? Yes, I bought Noir. I did. I did indeed. Ooh la la. Okay, back to it. We've got the stabilizers done, my friends. Now it is time to make sure we have everything lined up properly here. And our stabilizer sounded nice. I need to get a little bit of this lube off my desk. My paintbrush slid across my desk apparently at some point, and so I have got a little bit of cleanup to do. I'm just gonna grab a tissue real quick here, Chad. I'll be back in less than a minute timer, but we're putting the minute timer up nonetheless. start working on this beautiful PCB. Oh yes. I 
How are you going to get in there? There it goes. The answer to that question at the start was no, it didn't want to. Oh, where did my smaller, there it is. Thought I lost my smaller handled screwdriver for a second. When you first started streaming, what gear did you have? I had uh, a Logitech webcam and I was using a Nikon D5300 APS-C camera for my overhead. What's up, Dodo? Good to see you. Yeah, my, my, camera, was, my camera was dented when I first started. Um, and for audio, I had the same microphone that Jay, or that uh, Brian from Top Clack, I think, has. Uh, the pluggable USB mic. It was like a seventy to a hundred dollar microphone, I think, on Amazon. Like I did not spend much money on a setup. And then I upgraded from that to the Rode NT1 and a Scarlet Audio Solo, a Scarlet Solo audio controller. Um, Justin, what's good, brother? Good to see you. How long ago did you start? Uh, I started about two years ago now. And yeah, so now uh, I've made I've made lots of updates over the years. Um, keyboards for me has kind of uh, just morphed into a million different other hobbies. Um, so, so thank you. I appreciate that keystream. Um, yeah, so keyboards for me kind of like morphed into video, into photography, into um, into audio, into lighting. I mean, it's just it's just mutated into a million different things I get all gassed up on these days. Um, but yeah, so nowadays we're running the A6500 for the overhead camera with a, I really like Sigma's lenses. I'm using all, a full Sigma kit right now. I have a Sigma DGDN 14 to 24 lens on the overhead. And then I have, uh, that's a 2.8. And then I have the uh, Sony a7R 3 for the face cam. My webcam is a Sony a7R 3 And that is paired with a Sigma DGDN um, uh, 24 to 70 2.8 as well. The zooms provide just such good um, versatility for streaming. I can change little small things around about my desk, where I'm sitting, you know, how far away my desk is, how far away my overhead is. And so, yeah, so that, that really helps. I definitely recommend that. I was using a prime for a bit for my overhead. I was using one of the Sony Zeiss 18 millimeter primes for a bit. Absolutely beautiful lens. Uh, very, very sharp, probably sharper than what you're looking at here, but it was just a pain in the butt for uh, constantly having to like move the physical camera around to get it into the right spot. Whereas with the uh, with the uh, Sigma, I'm running on like 16 millimeter, I think right now. I just got my first studio upgrade, a studio light. I'm planning on upgrading the audio to a Sennheiser MKE 600 and a Motu M2. Nice, there we go. Yeah. So what uh, what light did you get? I'm actually getting rid of this light box here. This is a uh, this is a Godox 60 watt for the for the money. Absolutely incredible. If you want to go really deep, you can get the Aperture 120D or the 300D. Um, they're even nicer, um, but they're quite expensive. Ha! <laughs> Ease shoe. Yeah. It do be like that sometimes though. But that's how it was for me when I first started. And then look at me now. Keyboards have a dangerous way of getting you into 10 million different hobbies. I'm building Gundams now. Watch, next thing you know, I'm going to have like a full painting chamber for my Gundams. I don't even think it's called a painting chamber, where they do like the little air. I, I have no idea what that vacuum chamber is called, but... <laughs> Yeah, CIMs are my are my new downfall. Oh, Alex, I hear you there, brother. Yeah, which uh, which customs are you working with right now? I've got a set of uh, I'm using the 64 uh, audio A12s. 
And I'm pretty much one and done with the CIMs. I've been thinking about getting some of the Campfire Andromedas, um, but I, uh, I have not pulled the trigger on that. But those look, those look pretty good. I've heard good things. Make a paint booth and go from painting gunplay to painting cars. There's the ticket. He's a shoe. There's the ticket. Got to think about how this thing is going to scale. Let's go. But nothing, nothing, I don't know about you, chat, but if you're where I'm at and keyboards are close to it, nothing phases me from an economic perspective anymore. I used to look at things and say, oh, that's absurdly expensive. I'm not spending that much money on X. Now with keyboards, I'm like looking at something that, you know, normally I would have said that's unreasonable. And I look at it now after being in the keyboarding hobby and I'm like, oh, only a thousand dollars for that light? That's totally reasonable. That's cheap. Let's go. You know, it's it's a bad it's a bad bad mentality to be into from a from a from a fiscal responsibility perspective. My wife doesn't even ask any questions anymore. She's just like, whatever. It's whatever. Hey, Trinola. Good to see you. But yeah, we have fun with it though, Keystream. If you're into that sort of thing, and, and anyone else in chat, if you're into that sort of thing, join up in Discord. We have a uh, we have a full desk setup channel where I've done a full build stream of my desk, or a full photo vlog of my desk building. Um, I uh, I put up a an overhead cabinet over my desk just recently and so that's been my latest chore and and pro not chore my latest project I should say and uh, and so I put all the updates on that my camera my overhead camera is actually nested inside a cabinet right now that I had to get a hole saw for and everything I don't have the grommet yet to actually put in it but you you know what chat you can see it here in the stainless steel plate <laughs> look at this you can see my camera there. You can see the cutout of the of the cabinet. You see how it has like I use the circular hole saw. There's my camera lens, and there's the bottom of the cabinet. My camera, my overhead camera, actually peeks through this cabinet. I have the full I have the full build on it um, in Discord. So feel free to join us over there if you're into that sort of thing. There you go. Hey Sam, not sure why I didn't find your channel earlier. Love the stream. I just shot you a message on Discord, but are you running any over ear headphones? I am, yeah. So I run uh, my dailies for over ears are the ZMF A list headphones. Um, I love those. Uh, admittedly, I have not tried as many over the ears as I would like. Um, but I've used like I've used some Sennheiser 8, uh, 800s. I've used the 600, the 660 HDs. I've used um, I've used uh, the LCD twos. I've used um, uh, the, the how do you pronounce it? The Ator, the ZMF Ators, um, and I've used some of the AKG headphones as well. Um, I'd like to try more Grados, some more Hi-Fi Man, um, some more Planar Magnetics, but uh, but yeah, so I, I, I'd really love to try those out. It's just with COVID, you know, the beauty of audiophiles is that you can like go to places and actually try a whole bunch of things and you can go to like conventions and try a whole bunch of things and obviously there's not having any of that now. So it's, it's tough to be getting into audiophile this year, but I really have, I really started to jump into it a lot more. So I'm... I'm like limited now to like looking up reviews and seeing seeing comparisons of cans compared to other cans. It's basically what I did with switches in the keyboarding hobby. I never got a switch hitter and just tried a million different switches to see what I like. I ended up just buying a board built with switches and tried that. And then when I was ready to try something else, I just looked and saw kind of out there what, what was similar. And let's see if this is gonna fit here. And so it was really a bad, bad, bad way to go about doing that. Um, it ended up costing me a lot more than it would have to find what I actually liked if I had just gone out and gotten a switch tester. Who are your favorite audio YouTube channels? Um, 
Oh, God. I'll tell you one that I watch a lot, but I don't really like him. Um, he always pops up in my recommended now, too. Who is the guy... Who is the guy that always has some, like, anime waifu figures on his desk? I can't remember his name. Like, I'm not a huge fan of him, Alex. But he has such Z reviews. But he has such in-depth reviews, and the guy has so much flex in the hobby that it's, like, it's hard not to just, like, watch some of his stuff. I'd love, I'd love more, yeah, he is so annoying. I'd love more content creators to love to be turned on to more content creators that do that sort of thing um, because admittedly I just don't I don't watch that as much um, you know who's been an incredible resource for me from an audiophile perspective um, AI AIO3 uh, the keyboard designer he is an absolutely intense audiophile and uh, and so whenever whenever I've had questions he's been a fantastic resource for that He's insane when it comes to audio equipment. But yeah, Z Review is totally annoying. I'm right there with you. I would not disagree with that. <laughs> but he does review a lot of things that I'm interested in. I end up just having to like click through his timeline and hope I find something of interest. And like, I can't watch a single one of his videos because each of his videos is like 40 minutes long. I'm like, dude, you got to figure this shit out. Yeah, he's not a good content creator. Um, somebody had just sent me a uh, somebody had just sent me a guy who was it is this is a a mirror polished steel plate. Somebody had just sent me a content creator that they liked in the audiophile world, and I can't remember who it was now. I'll try and re remember. PCB is tripping you out. Yeah, the PCB is pretty awesome, isn't it? Isn't it cool, chat? So chat, if, you, if you've never uh, tuned up a keyboard before, built one up from start to finish, um, I'll, uh, I'll catch you up and, and fill you in on what we're doing. So, uh, so we've just finished tuning the stabilizers. That's the process of putting lube actually within the components here that go on the wider keys, AKA your enter and backspace and spacebar and shift keys. Um, keeps those keys stable and inherently those components rattle and so we put a whole bunch of lube in them to make it so they don't rattle. We're just about to test the stabilizers that we just tuned uh, by dropping this uh, plate here onto the PCB uh, that has the stabilizers installed. And we'll put on some keycaps here in just a moment to test them. Um, from there, you'll be able to hear kind of how the stabilizer itself sounds before we solder everything into place. And so we do that just so that we don't have to go back and rebuild the entire board afterwards. You know, testing is always good. Test everything. Take your time. If you're new to keyboards, take your time with your build. Building a keyboard isn't that hard. You just have to take your time. Just built my first solder board today. Congratulations, Jesus Shoe. And I also had a steel plate. Stiff as hell, but really brings out the sound of holy pandas I put on them. Nice. Yeah, that's a... Uh... A good combo. We are also pairing a nice set of tactiles with this with this plate. Should end up with a good sounding result. The Kiwi switch we're using tonight from TKC. Uh, we are uh, kind of doing this build tonight uh, in conjunction with Protozoa, um, uh, who is also running the Nightwalker series switch. So this is a Duroc switch that is glow in the dark. So uh, if you've tried Duroc switches and maybe like that or, or haven't yet and wouldn't be interested in something like that, these are a cool housing. They are really cool looking. Um, you, can, you can find those out by doing the Nightwalker. Issue the Nightwalker command and you'll get the full details including a link to, uh, to the specific part on Protozoa Studio to find them. Uh, that group I ends tonight. So if you are interested in those, now is your last opportunity to scoop them up. I'm trying to find time to put together a Switch Couture Alice. That's a funny occurrence, Alex. I'm actually going to build a Switch Couture Alice here. Maybe as early as next week. I don't know if Switchero is in chat, um, but uh, Switchero was one of our winners from my Movember stream. And, uh, and he won himself a set of tangerines 
from me, which I will be tuning up and putting into a Switch Couture Alice for him. Yeah, you know, so it's funny, um, Izashu, I have always been a right-handed Y hitter, uh, and, and I also hit B with my right hand. Now, B technically should be hit with your left hand. Luckily, though, the Alice layout has got my best interest at heart, and they have got the, uh, they've got the, the B key on both sides, so it works out for me. Yeah, so I relearned how to type. I talk about this every now and then on my channel. I taught, I, I relearned how to type actually just about mm, five years ago now. Maybe less, maybe five or four. It might be coming up on five. Uh, but when I got into the keyboarding hobby, I actually didn't touch type correctly. And it was one of the first things that I was like, if I'm buying nice keyboards, I need to learn how to type properly. Um, <laughs> typing typing classes were just something I always kind of never paid attention to and always did my own thing and and I was typing I was typing fairly quickly in, in as far as the world is concerned not this hobby people in this hobby overall type way faster than the average um, and I was typing probably like 70 to 80 words per minute before I relearned how to type correctly and obviously that helped a lot, but I still, even after relearning how to type correctly, I still picked up a couple of bad habits. B, I still strike with the right hand, um, but that's actually, people have said that's actually not a bad thing. Um, hitting B with your right hand is in many ways actually better because your right, your left hand is already used with a QWERTY layout more than your right. And so by using B with your left, or by using B with your right hand, you're actually helping yourself out a little bit. B is in the middle of J and F, so I didn't think it mattered. Yeah, so, well, uh, yeah, you know, like your Y key and your B key are both kind of in no man's land there. They're both a little bit of a reach from either your left or right hand. So it, it, it does kind of uh, end up in a common spot where people will, will hit it with one or the other, and it varies. Kirk, Kirk, the last airbender, thank you so much for the follow, and, and I'm well. Hello to you, welcome. My day's been going quite nicely. A little bit hectic at the end of it, but uh, you know, we're in a good spot now. We're in a good spot. I felt bad originally because my in-laws were here and I wasn't spending time with them tonight because I actually double booked this as well as having them here. But they watched a movie and fell asleep within 30 minutes of it, so I no longer feel too bad. I was hanging out with them up to like 9.25 and I went out at 10 o'clock and they were all asleep. <laughs> so, not too bad. Not too bad, not too bad. Oh, nice. You're going to be building a novel key cream board. Hot slot, there you go. It's a good way to get into the hobby. Allows you to try out a whole bunch of things without having to rebuild your board every time. Okay, I'm gonna carefully drop this thing down onto the PCB and see if we can get these switches lined up. Let's see what we got here. So the reason, chat, that I put in about 50% of our switches uh, is it helps to keep um, the uh, plate from sandwiching down on top of the PCB. This is gonna help us keep the separation we want to maintain between those two layers. Uh, and so um, by, by putting uh, these switches in, it prevents the plate from sandwiching down on top of the PCB and flattening down. We wanna keep this gap here, you can see that. Forgive me, I know I'm off camera just a little bit. I'm just pushing these switches down just a bit. So welcome everybody to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Max. I go by Max F, and I build keyboards on Twitch. 
I do this about two times a week, give or take, sometimes more. You're getting an extracurricular stream out of me here tonight. Um, oh my goodness. We've got an interesting bow here in the middle where the middle of the plate is bowing up a little bit. Do you see this? Watch, watch right here on my index finger. Unfortunately, that's bowing up and not holding in. So we'll need to use, we'll need to use the soldering. We'll need to use the pins of the soldering of the of the switches to hold that down there. Um, we should be able to be okay with that, though. Not ideal, but we should be okay. Hopefully, my only concern is hopefully this doesn't affect sound in any way by having that little bit of a gap. Um, so. Uh, Simpa, how long, how long do you plan on going? Uh, I'll continue until I finish it. Um, so we're about an hour and a half into the build. My average build length is about three hours. So we'll probably be done here, 11.30. We'll probably be done here, or 11 o'clock now. Probably around like 12, or 1.30, give or take. Eastern time, that is. Oh, I was talking about breaking in his creams. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, breaking in the creams uh, um, are about five months. That's about a five month period of time. Until he finishes it. That's right, we finish. We always finish, chat. <laughs> What's up, Nanu? Good to see you. I'm running out of water. I need to go get some more water here. Okay, let's test our stabilizers here and hopefully Hopefully the plate's not pushing up on our stabilizers. Hopefully we can get a good test of the stabilized keys here with this plate bowing up a little bit. Nah, Nanu, I see you. I just ran out of water though, so I'm going to test my stabilizers, at which point, if everything's good, we will take a quick one minute break. I will go get more water and I will hydrate then, so I'm putting that on hold for just a minute. I'm not ignoring you. I'm putting it on hold. We got good clearance here with these stabilizers. Those all look good. So it's always, always, always good to test your stabilizers. Make sure you've got not only a stabilizer that doesn't rattle, but also clears all the components. So inside these housings here is a wire that goes all the way across and sometimes you'll run into an issue where as unfortunate as it is the wire will not clear the bottom of the plate so that is one of the things you absolutely want to check for when you're testing your stabilizers always always test I have a feeling this one's going to be a nice medium between thawky and clacky tonight. Need to work that one in a little bit. Go, 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 go. Fingerprints on a stainless steel board are just bound to happen. We're gonna try and wipe them off before we're done here. But let's have a listen here. I'm gonna mute it on my end. I know I'm not muting it for you. You guys won't be able to hear it anyways. I do something I title the Lowell's method. So Lowell Stacks is another keyboard streamer if you don't watch him. You should, he's a cool dude. Uh, he uses a method where he pushes the stabilized key halfway down and it eliminates the switch sound and keycap sound, and then he presses on the other side to see if any to see if any rattle with the wire or anything is happening. So that's what I'm listening to right now. That all sounds good.
Okay, we're back. All right, the, the stabilizers sound pretty good. Okay, uh, let me catch up on chat here real quick. Um, gotta get a 60% PCB. Not sure if I want a DZ60 since that PCB is more whole than actual PCB. That's true, he's a shoe. It is a Swiss cheese PCB. Be careful with that. Just make sure that your plate and PCB are both compatible. You'd be surprised. There's so much Swiss cheesing on that PCB, you just expect it to support everything. However, you will find incompatibility with 60% plates even on that PCB, so be careful. Just make sure you research and get, get something that will work with what you're looking for. Hey, I asked uh, another keyboard streamer and he said looping isn't hard, it just takes time. Do you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, looping's definitely not difficult. There's nothing inherently difficult about building a keyboard. You just have to have the proper tools and take your time. I got some Crytox 205 for Christmas, so wee. <laughs> Max busting a wrap. Uh-oh. From what I could tell, DZ60 should be compatible with the clip. With the clipe, the clipe T with the mechanistic brass plate, but not on research. I believe that is, but again, remember, the clipe is just a standard 60%. It's just like this, right here. This is what the clipe looks like, obviously. This is not the clipe, but uh, the clip, clipe, how do you pronounce it? Whatever, you get what I'm saying. It's like this. You can have a split backspace, a 2U backspace, you can have ISO, you can have ANSI, you can have a split left shift, split right shift, you can have um, a bottom row can be all sorts of different. You can have a 6.256 or 7U, you can have 1.5, 1.25, um, 1U, there's a million different things you can do on the bottom. The case does not affect your PCB and plate orientation on a clipe at all. So a clipe is just a tray mount 60%. Any of these PCBs and plates are compatible for tray mount just about. Um, the standard ones, I should say. Like, you know, don't buy, this is an ogre keyboard, don't buy an ogre PCB and plate expecting it to work with a clipe. It will not, but for the general 60%, those all fit into a tray mount. However, the plates and PCBs can still have compatibility issues where maybe you have a plate that has a fixed bottom row and the DZ60 doesn't support maybe that bottom row layout. Just that's what I'm saying. Keep that in mind. Um, keep that in mind. I have an HS60. HS60, I've heard of the H60 from Heine. What's the HS60? Um, best lube for novel key creams is Crytox, right? Because people told me that Tribosis is for tactile and Crytox is for linear. That is such a general statement that it's that I cannot I cannot tell you enough that that is not true. Tribosis and Crytox are two um, are two different uh, uh, are two completely different things. Like I think you can even have I don't is that a brand is that a manufacturer there's there's differences though in those lubes like Tribosis 3204 and Crytox 205 like you know you can use them on tactiles you can use them on linears there's there's multiple different things you can do with them um, you know on on every different type of switch um, I, I would I would make recommendations based on a specific switch not necessarily making a blanket statement like that that's that's a dangerous thing to get into um, I don't I don't know who said that but that is a dangerous thing to just make a blanket statement like that. Um, all right, I need to head out. I love the stream. I'll be here next time. Sam, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Um, yeah, and, and so, so the big thing, though, when you're looking at these PCBs and plates is going to their website, going to and looking for the keyboard layout guide. So um, since we're talking about it, I'll take a quick second here to just go over it here, chat. Um, so let's go to the DZ60 page, for example, DZ60 PCB, and let me bring that up here, and 
here's your DZ60 PCB on, McCain, on KBD fans. Now this is what you're looking for. Um, so these are okay, right? You can see a little bit. It doesn't really, it's not helpful in looking at the key layout though. Here's what you're looking for for supported layouts. Now the DZ60, as you can see, is a nightmare of layouts. It is Swiss cheesed all to crazy hell. But what this is showing you is that here's the options for this key. You can either do stepped or standard caps lock. Now you can either do a full left shift or you can do the ISO left shift. You can do a full right shift or you can do a split right shift with a couple of different options um, on the DZ60. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, you can see how this bottom row has a million different options as well. So, um, you know, with the bottom row, you can do seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Like, I mean, yeah, you can tell, look at this. There's just a million different spots for you to drop a switch in this thing. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, you look at this and you're like, oh, this looks like it would be compatible with everything but then you wanna look at your plate and see what layouts your plate supports. Now, sometimes your plate for the bottom row is just one large gaping hole. And in that instance, more often than not, it supports a lot of different layouts. However, looking at that, I still would not make the blanket statement that if it's just a large gaping hole on the plate there, you know, like let's look at 60% uh, keyboard plate. Let's go to images here and let me pull you up an example. Like, you know, here's one, right? That has a million different things you can do on the bottom. However, I would not say this would support everything. There still could be some layouts on the bottom row that this would not support. Like for example, this doesn't look like it would support a split shit or a split space bar. There's no there's no gap there for the for the, the switch to go. So I mean, while it looks like it supports a lot, like here's another one that looks like it supports a lot. This looks like it does support split space bar. But you just want to go to these sites and you want to look at them and you want to make sure that the image is there. The key thing to look for is this. You want to make sure the images for both your PCB and plate line up. So it's easiest to just do that yourself. Take your time, do your research, and uh, and don't and don't Christopher Yee it by uh, by by buying thirteen different plates and not having a single one that works properly. Because yeah, he did that, and then he decided to talk about it on his YouTube channel. Because that's a lol. Uh, Sam, I missed it. Thank you so much for the tier one, brother. I appreciate you. Yeah, do not take, do not be Chrissy. Hello, I took a nap and fell asleep for hours by accident. Raz, trust me, I've been there, brother. It's good to see you. You're you're always on time, my dude. Good to see you. Uh, Ease of shoe. I see not seen. Uh, oh, I see not seen a U.S. vendor uh, besides Group by Post. So I guess I have to look elsewhere. Uh, yeah. So uh, you know, I mean, Ease of shoe. You already know the deal. Mech Market. If you don't see a Group by currently going on for it, um, a lot of times you can find like great people to actually cut plates for you too. This hobby is uh, is is super open source. You'll find a lot of awesome people that if you cannot find something currently, you know, a lot of people will, like cut their own acrylic plates, and so you know that's a great a great alternative and a cheaper alternative as well in many instances. It took them seven hours to finish a build. That's a big yikes. I mean that's because the dude that's because the dude didn't research anything and he had to and he had to do that probably live. I mean if you if you spend a solid amount of time in prep work by the right components and pay attention to what you're getting and uh, you're going to have a good time. Buy the proper tools. You don't need to buy super expensive tools, but buy proper tools. Buy the proper compatible components. The big thing for compatibility is your PCB and plate, especially with a 60%. I can't emphasize that enough. Layouts for TKLs are so much easier. Layouts for 75%, they're a little, they're a little dicey too, depending upon the 75%. But some of them are fixed. I mean, yeah, there's, there's so much variance with 60% though. 65% are a little more locked in more often than not. 65% more often than not, it's just a decision between your right shift, either a stepped or standard caps lock, and uh, and then your bottom row. You just gotta figure out your bottom row out more in, in more instances than not. What are your opinions on the candy bar 40%? It's cool, I like the candy bar. The packaging for it is awesome too. They have like this Willy Wonka themed packaging, however, 40% aren't for me. 
So unless I'm building the clients, you won't see it on my channel. I just don't do 40%. 40% started off as a meme and a joke that was like, hey, look at this. I can grab a keyboard and I can put it in my oversized pant pocket and away I go. And then people actually saw that. We're like, oh, that's awesome. I should totally make a keyboard like that. And that's how 40% became a thing. And I've gotten so much heat from the 40% community. Watch, my viewership will drop by 10 people because I just insulted 40 zoners. <laughs> I have I have nothing against 40 zoners. It's just not my pre it's just not my thing. Just waiting game with neck market, but I'm still riding my high for my EO87 build. So I can wait, I guess. There you go, easy shoe. You know, the, the pro tip is just keep keep getting in a million different group buys. And as the first group buy starts coming in, then you'll just be on a wave where you'll always have group buys coming in. That's the big brain way to do it. That's the quickly, quickly depleting your wallet way of doing things. Not something I probably recommend if you're wanting to be financially conservative. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, sometimes it'd be like that though. I got lucky and bought a plate for my 60% and it happened to match. There you go, Nanu. You know, sometimes it'd be like that. I gotta wait till April or more for a GMK set. What, just to buy one or to, to receive the next one that you have purchased previously? I got GMK Redline, both versions of GMK Honor. Yeah, GMK Honor was nice. That was a good looking, uh, good looking, good looking key set. I think I got the dark version of Honor because the light version just seemed too much like black on white. Uh, Hiragana. Nah, the medium brain, big brain is buying only GMK Wob. Absolutely key stream. I'm all about that GMK Wob life. That's absolutely right. Wob is life. I think I have three WAB sets right now. I have a fourth on the way. And I have some more conversion kits coming for WAB as well. I love WAB. <laughs> Thanks so much for the follow there, McComick. Welcome. So chat, we are just loading up all of the switches onto our PCB and plate gear, getting prepped up and ready for our soldering portion of the stream. So uh, we're using a Sagan bottom row on this. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that, the Sagan bottom row is a 1.511.5 7U bottom row. It repeats on the other side of the 7U, 1.511.5. 1 um, and so pretty classic TKL layout here. We're not reinventing the wheel with anything. Hey man, I have to go, but I will be lurking. Keystream, good talking to you. We'll catch you next time. Hey, I just came back. Can we see the rest of the keycaps? I did not get to see. Yeah, GMK terminal? Absolutely. Um, I also owe you a hydrate here, Nanu. I said I was gonna do it after I tuned the stabilizers and I didn't refill my water either. So yeah, I'll take, I'll take a quick break as soon as I get these switches in. And stop me if you've heard this one before, but uh, we will grab a drink. I will hydrate because I haven't drunk in the last 15 minutes. And uh, I will show you guys GMK Terminal real quick. I'm not gonna take it out of the case, but I will show it to you. Yeah, get a head start. Go grab a drink. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put up the Be Right Back screen here in just a second, and I'm gonna grab a drink as well. And when we get back, we will be ready to uh, show off terminal and then uh, build up this keyboard here. Solder everything in. I don't know why I'm wiping off the stainless steel here in between this portion. I don't really need to be because I'm about to be touching it as I solder it. Uh, but yeah, all the fingerprints are coming off. Yay. This is my OCD kicking in here. I just can't, I can't help myself. Um, all right, be right back.
we are back. Oh, you guys have the right idea, drinking beer and Capri Sun. Here I am with my pedestrian water. Here we go, Nanu though, better late than never. We got the, uh, we got the hydrate in. And Sinpa, I'm catching up on chat. I do apologize. I missed your question from before. Um, as well as uh, Kirk, last airbender, what are your opinions on the candy bar? Oh, I already answered the candy bar 40. But Sinpa, you said, do you think the plate would be better if it only supported the layout you're using? Just because the plate would be all around the switch and there would be larger, and there wouldn't be larger holes. Uh, is, is what I tend to execute said. Uh, yes, I do. Fixed layout is better. This is... A fixed layout board the only options and differences on this board are a split or standard shift on the right a split or a standard backspace or a stepped or a standard caps lock aside from those three options everything on this keyboard here is fixed so my plate holds all of my modifiers properly. It makes it easier to build. It sounds better. It works better, uh, in my opinion. That's a little bit opinionated, um, but, but also a, a little bit rooted in science. In fact, um, it, it will sound better. Um, feel, maybe not as much. You're probably not gonna sense a difference there, but uh, maybe a little bit, I don't know. I, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm no keyboard scientist. Ask Black Simon about that he'd be able to give you a more technical answer of why it's superior. But I think anyone who's deeper into the hobby will agree that it is superior to have a fixed layout if you are set on your layout. Uh, how have you not got to soldering yet? You know, it'd just be like that, Tom. You know how it goes. Took him seven hours to finish a build. Now that was Chris, that was not me. Just waiting game. Uh, I, this is all stuff I missed. I apologize for missing some of this stuff. <laughs> okay, so GMK Terminal is up now. As promised, I will show off those keycaps. If you have not seen GMK Terminal, here it is. How are the Kiwis? I built with these before, Bram. Uh, the Kiwis are quite nice. If you're into a heavy tactile, you will like the Kiwis. There we go. There are the keycaps we will be using tonight. So and again, I'm going to leave them inside the case for now. We'll get into this here once we uh, once we get to the to the dressing portion of the build, which I also started a bit late, Tom. So I mean, we're only two hours in. This is normally when I get to a, a round of soldering. I'm probably a little bit later, but we've been talking a lot tonight. It's also Friday, dude. What's what's the rush? I had a uh, I had a drink before I started streaming tonight too. Had a little. Makers, Makers Manhattan before I went live with my father-in-law. Um, compared to T1 and Holy Panda, so Kiwi has a T1 stem, so you're gonna see a, a very similar result to a Kiwi, uh, as you will the T1. Holy Pandas are probably a little bit of a higher bump um, and some nuanced differences. They're both a big bump tactile. Um, if you take a look at my YouTube channel, uh, you can you can see my full review of the Kiwi Switch, actually. Uh, there you go. Did I spell it right? Socials? There it goes. Just a little bit delayed. All right. So since Tom is talking shit, I bet, I bet, I guess, uh, I wish I could talk. Since Tom is talking shit, I guess I better keep on keeping on with the build so that we're not doing this all night. I have to install a chandelier tomorrow, chat. Have y'all ever done that? That's a dad thing right there. That's what all of my keyboard builds should be titled. Dad builds keyboard. We got a detailed neck cam for <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Take a look at that chiseled jawline. It's no lull's jaw, but it's not bad. <laughs> Max had five shots. Keep on keeping. Oh god. I did not. I did not take shots before this. I did have a monster energy drink though because I was fading right around six o'clock or so. So I had a monster a bit earlier in the evening. Okay. 
Uh, let's get our fan. And... The soldering portion of the stream is an absolutely fantastic time to continue with the q and I'm going to turn RTX voice on as soon as we get this on. Hopefully my mic doesn't crash. It doesn't. Nice. Okay. And let's go to RTX voice. Start with that. And go here. And there we go. Okay. There we go. That should get rid of the uh, fan noise. Actually. Every time people ask your favorite Switch, drink one shot. Oh, God. No, every time people ask, what's your favorite Switch for gaming? <laughs> now it's going to be a drinking game build. Yeah, Bram, we could do something like that. That would be funny. What's your favorite Switch for gaming? <laughs> My favorite Switch for gaming is MX Blues. Because if everyone in your household doesn't know that you're raping people on, uh, on whatever it is you're playing, Call of Duty or... <laughs> you know, whatever it is people play. If everyone in your household doesn't know that, you know, you're bringing down the house, what good is it? Do you have a key cult? I do not actually have a key cult. I've had them in the past, but, uh, but I do not have a key cult right now. I'm, uh, I'm actually trying to Get through some progress points on a project I have with people. It's been slow rolling, <laughs> admittedly. Um, and with their latest 265 build, I think I'll be a little bit more delayed. Romer G for life, bruh. Let's go. <laughs> okay. How much do we have to raise to sponsor a key cult build with vintage razor greens and pudding caps? Oh god. How much do we have to raise? Um, oh man, I'll do it for free. Send me a key cult, send me razor greens, and send me some pudding caps. I don't care. I'll throw that stuff on it. I'll have it desoldered and built up with something different by the next time you see me, but I'll build it. I don't care. <laughs> Anyone want to build me a key cult? So yeah, so so according to that, your answer is a lot <laughs> because you would need to send me a key cult. Tell you what, I will get I will get a key. And I will I will allow somebody to send me just a PCB and a plate, be a key cult or other if it's compatible, that works with it, and I will build it up on an extra PCB and plate. And then we can have the full stupid meme build on the key cult. Holy Rezzers! That's what you should go with. That's actually a good switch. Halo, Halo Clear or Halo True Housings with Razor Green Stems. Build up some Holy Rezzers. All right, so we're really focusing on the Woden method here tonight, chat. If you have never seen a keyboard solder, again, we were talking about it earlier, there's nothing complicated with a keyboard build. This as well is not complicated. There's nothing complex, nothing, you know, that takes, you know, years of training to do. Uh, you just have to take your time and move through it methodically and do a little bit of research. This is a technique that, uh, that will serve you quite well in your next soldering session. So, I'll show it to you again. I just did it on the four switches. If you can pay attention, ah, what we do, I'll explain it first and then I'll tell you. What we do is we push with our index finger on a switch so that it makes a good contact point with the PCB in plate. Well, excuse me. First, let me just, I'll show you and I'll walk you through it. First, we solder a single pin of the switch. Done. Then, with our index finger, we apply pressure between the switch and the PCB as we bring this stem molten. So we touch it here with our iron, bring it molten, we push the switch down, and then we let go with the iron. And now, that switch is held in there by that stem. 
Now I touch the other stem or the other, yep, the other leg or stem of the switch. And now at this point, that switch has a really good contact point with the board. I'll show it to you again. We're going to have to do it a lot on this build because this plate is slightly warped. I'm hoping that as we work through it, we get rid of the warpage. I'm going to start from the sides and then work my way over. So there's that one. I got the hang of it and after about 15 minutes, it's pretty easy. My joints aren't the greatest, so everything works. Yeah, so um, this isn't perfect. This is kind of a blanket statement, but the three second rule on soldering works pretty well. Um, I don't think about that myself anymore, but but if you're first time soldering, you, you touch the solder to the pin, you say one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, take it off. And that's about how much solder you should need. Constantly flowing on as they say that. You know, so. The other thing that's helpful um, when you're soldering, and I should have done this before, um, the other thing that's helpful is, uh... oh God, I lost my train of thought. What was I gonna say? Old man, boomer moment. What was I gonna say? I had it, and then I saw that the switch pin was bent and I forgot what I was gonna say. I'm a keycap puller, come on, please. I don't remember what else I was going to say. Sorry, chat. I'm old. Senior moment. Let me check with this if I got any other pins out. This is not good. The whole middle of the board is pushed up. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one pin in the middle right now. I'm near this chat. Hopefully this sounds hopefully this doesn't affect us. I'm I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little bit nervous about this build here tonight. Hopefully it's not dented. No scuffs, please. Stop. Oh, I need to sleep. My arm needs to sleep on me. Damn it! I have more. It would be helpful if I pulled all the switches out that bent. Um, hold on. I just cut another one. I can't really see the ones in the middle because the ones in the middle aren't making contact points with the PCB anyways right now. So that I'm going to kind of have to look at when I get close, but this guy definitely has a bent pin. So let me bend that properly back. Sorry, chat. There we go. All right, so yeah, feel free. Any questions that you guys may have about soldering keyboards, bones, anything. Let's open up the conversation. Open up the lines. Open up the lines. What do you guys have for me? First time caller, long time listener. Max was just curious, what's your favorite switch for gaming? What type of solder do you use? I'm on tester with 4763. If we're talking in keyboard gear, um, Soldering irons, you can get away with something cheaper as long as it's a variable temperature, but solder, you want to use something nice. Kester is a nice solder. It's going to cost you about $30 to $40 for a roll. It will last you forever, and it will, it will make your life so much easier on the building portion if you have it. I'm desoldering my KVD 75 e 2 and hating every second of it. Bum bum boy. I feel your pain. Desoldering is not the most fun. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, now that the sides are done and held in, I let's pray here, chat. 
that we can get the top row working. God bless America. There's another switch here that's, we're just gonna, this is just gonna be the nature of the build tonight. I'm gonna find a couple more switches that the pins got bent on because this plate is lifting up in the middle, especially. So pray with me, chat, that the plate is okay, that it does fit, that everything will be all right. Say it with me, chat, in your mind. Everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be all right. I'm gonna work my way down this top row, pushing the switch down every time. The Woden method should save us. The Woden method should give us good contact points on every single one of these switches. Let me show you a little before, and then you will see the after. So before, take a look at this. Can you see that chat? The pins are not even in. You see the middle? You see how the middle is there? Look at the edge. The edge looks proper. That, that pin is through. You see, look at the green. Look at the green middle one, the big one in the middle. Look at how the switches are bowing up in the middle. And then on the side, the side looks right, the side looks right, the middle, wrong, very wrong. It'll be okay. What's the most prized board in your collection? Um, my 910, my 910 Doge is probably um, my biggest flux. Um, I like that one a lot too. Um, my daily right now, though, is this ogre. I love these Garys. These Garys turned out so nice. So this Woden method here will save us in this build chat. It will absolutely save us. So it's going to get us so that we have good contact points on all these switches. Going all the way down the row here. We're just going to work from left to right. Pushing these puppies in all the way down the board. Forgive me if there's portions of the stream where I'm kind of like giving you guys a top of the head view. Um, I'm gonna get my back into this thing a little bit since I had to push each and every one of these guys in. What board do you regret selling my LZCLS? Is that a quick enough answer? My LZCLS, that's an easy one. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> oh, you said what one board you regret selling. There's a few that I regret selling but the LZ CLS is the one I regret selling the most. That thing was built so nice. It had such good switches on it. I love that keyboard. Had some Ergo clears on it that were just to die for. They sounded so good. And just the color, everything about that board was awesome. All right, we're looking better, chat. This plate is getting properly aligned. Looking much better. At this point, I can pull up a little bit away with doing all these guys. I'll still need to push these down at the contact points, but I can get away with doing the whole row here. Chat, the one thing we didn't do tonight, we didn't test the PCB. So 
I'm a little nervous about that. Let's pray that the PCB works. 2020 board of the year. Um, 2020 board of the year. I'd say like something that's been shipped in 2020 or something that is going into group buy. This is considered a stiff plate, yes. And sandwich mount makes it slightly stiffer. Potentially, yes. Just upgraded away from 60 hertz screen for the first time. I'm so happy. Nimrats, you got a 1440, 120 hertz. Heck yeah, brother. Welcome. Welcome to the to the 2K 120 master race. Let's go. Uh, do you think it's worth it for the average person in the hobby to try out vintage blacks? Pretty expensive, and you have to cherry pick switches while we have good options already out, like alpacas and tanks. Absolutely. I mean, easy shoe, you hit the nail on the head, man. You pretty much answered your own question. Would you say that a Hakko FR301 is worth it? Uh, if you're desoldering a bunch, yes. Get Cherry MX Hyperglide Blacks. Yeah, those are the retooled retools. Yeah, that would be a good way to go. Yep, and yeah, exactly. Use them stock for a while, break them in, and then use them. All right, how are we doing here with this? Let's see. Let me just get some switches that are a little bit low. So right now I'm just giving this a visual inspection here, chat. I know you can't really see this, but I'm giving it a visual inspection. I'm going to be pushing through these switches here. There's just a couple more that seem like they have contact point issues. But what I'm looking for, and I'll show you, what I'm looking for here, if you look on this view, I'm looking for, focus please. It's still focused on my desk, I'm sorry. They focus on my hand, please, there we go. All right, so what I'm looking for here is for there to be a good contact point between the bottom of the switch and the top of the PCB. I look for zero gap in between there. So the bottom really haven't done yet, so let's do the bottom row real quick and, uh, and push all those in. Hey Max, I love watching your streams. I've learned so much from watching your streams. I really like that. Uh, like to know what the best. <laughs> okay, buddy, you got me. <laughs> I'll be on the lookout for hypothesis. Yeah, there you go. I'd recommend the Cherry MX Brown, posted by blah, 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 one year ago. A lot of enthusiasts hate brown switches. A lot of enthusiasts hate brown switches. They all be like, nah, brown switches are trash, and I can't even feel the tactile bump, and the sound profile is so goddamn mushy. I have to, you know, the mass drop away for eight years after pre ordering Zelia's. <laughs> this is a good copy pasta. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good copy pasta. Um, yeah, good stuff. Solid, solid stuff, Chad. This gets the max F seal of approval. My favorite was the guy who got angry and said, whatever, I'll just leave them. I think it was, hold on, I can pull it up. I can pull it up pretty quickly, chat. My favorite copy pasta was the angry 14 year old kid in the mech keys. Discord here, hold on, where was it? Uh, is it, is it this latest one? That's best copy pasta where is it this is the original this is the meme of the year 
year. Yeah, meme of the year. Hold on, chat. Here it is. The meme of the year. You just want me to fucking leave? Fine. This isn't going anywhere, and I honestly don't care anymore. <laughs> and the TMO51 is really good, too. Here we go, boys. Hold on. Where I need to find it. Here we go, boys. Let's see if I can find it. So I think that was, was that Artemy? Or was it, who did the TMA 51? This is such a, here we go, boys. TMO 50 layout is the greatest thing ever. Let me tell you, sir, first, First of all, classic IC inspirations on the HHKD blocker style. It also has the colon and whatever tilde keys, unless other competitors in the 40 space find, which are other sporting space files, which I uh, which I find completely unreplaceable in layers. It also has extra keys from macro. <laughs> it just goes on. It's like the most enthusiastic thing about the TMO50. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, it's so good. Here's the copy pasta. It's so long. It's so long. It's such a good copy pasta though. Here we go, boys. <laughs> Just the way it starts. TMO50 layout. <laughs> Hold on, it's in there. This is the start of it. I don't think this is all of it. This is so dumb. More stupid keyboard copy pasta memes. <laughs> so dumb. But yeah, those are some of my favorites. Um, okay, so what was the 97 copy pasta? That wasn't it, was it? But you just want me to leave one? Is that it? The DTK Cyber Key Cap set is unironically the worst set I've ever seen. I think I missed it. <laughs> yeah. I probably have seen it and just don't remember, but maybe I've missed it. Keyboard drama and big copy pasta memes and keyboard hobby is what I live for. Favorite, favorite overall copy pasta though has got to go to the attack helicopter. I think that's one of my favorites for sure. <laughs> and it's so wrong and so racist and so dumb, yet I still love it. Hate to get flashbang. Ooh, the one bad thing about doing this thing over and over and over again is it destroys my fingertips, chat. It's so bad having to do this over and over again, like pushing a switch so hard. But I push them. I'll push him. I'll push him all the way to the edge. <laughs> oh, so there's the group by threat. Yeah. Is that is that the super bright yellow one? Oh, oh, oh! You're talking about the group by threat. Lollipop, hey, my first custom goal. I wanted to get gas mount keyboard. What are some of the cheapest? Some of the cheapest gasket mount keyboards. Um, oh man, chat, what have you got? What have you got for them? The Hive 16 Super Grand. There's a lot of boards that are in this. I see them are gasket mount. That's true. Yeah, I mean, you're looking probably at like you're probably looking at like high interest checks and group buys if you want to get something cheaper. Going aftermarket, I think on just about any gasket mount keyboard right now is probably going to be a pretty pretty hefty markup. Um, okay, so all of these switches. Uh, 
I have a lot of second kings to catch up on. Chat, forgive me. I might miss a message or two here. I will do my best to catch up. I have been live for a bit now. And the soldering is taking too long because we have this separation here on the PCD. And so I want to get through it. I want to focus on this build, so I'm not building at 2 a.m. I don't want to be doing that to you guys. I hope everything lines up okay. Pray for the chat. I hope everything lines up okay on this keyboard. I think we can. I think we'll be all right. Have faith. Have faith in your boy Max F. We definitely need to do the welding method for this entire second row, though. This is painful, chat. This is painful. Let's see. We'll just work our way from left to right. Pushing down everything with the loading method as we go. This is going to be the fastest way to do this build tonight. Shack guy down and then just rip my fingers. I'm going to put a glove on here in a second. I'm going to put a glove on because I look at my index finger. I am destroying my index finger for this build. What's up, DSM4? Uh, so, the keyboard, what's up with you? If you're asking what's up in regards to this keyboard, uh, we just have a little bit of warpage on the plate, and so I'm literally going to work my way down the entirety of this board, doing what I dub the word method. And at this point, you've seen it, if you've been following the chat, if not, basically I do one of the soldered pins on the switch, push the switch through with my index finger as I make the switch molten, and then I take my soldering iron off so that the switch is no longer molten, and then I take the iron off and then the switch is in there. The switch is in there, it has a good contact point, yada yada yada. I'm going to work my way from left to right on this board doing that method almost the entire way, because this guy is warped. I'm going to get the point of this bill there. It's actually not as bad, but right now, the switches have a fair degree of separation. You don't have good rewards for channel points. What other rewards would you like to see? I will oblige. Those pepper noodles, yikes. I did pretty good with uh, with spicy things. I could put a I could put a hot challenge on them. I would just be worried though if I did something like that that I'd be done. But, uh, if I eat something hot enough, then I'm just like done. I'm like checking out them. Never do 
side stabilizers. They do be like that though sometimes. deal here chat what just happened is the uh, stabilizer Everguide stabilizers um, wires are pretty prone to popping out on these and we just had this wire pop out on us and now it's in a spot where I actually need to take the wire out to get it back into the housing properly not an ideal thing to have happen to you all right, now it's lined up. Let's get the screwdriver back and try to push that wire back into play. Okay, there we go. Okay. It looks like it looks like it's back in. Let me see. Yeah, I was putting I was putting so much pressure on another part of the board. And I was actually I was actually hitting the shift as well, and it actually popped the wire out. Um, so redeemed at the beginning of the stream, he was just struggling through the rest of the pill. It was hilarious, also kind of sad. Oh my god, that's so brutal. Are you getting any sets this month? Yeah, GMK Pink on Navy. I'll definitely be picking up. Um, GMK Gregory is so funny too. I would recommend Gregory. Gregory is a fun set. Chat, 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 chat. Is this ever gonna get to the point where it's actually in there? I can't find a supreme level weapon. The answer to that question is I don't, don't know. I don't know, chat. This is a, it's kind of a bummer. We'll make it through. This is just part of the thing where, you know, this is just part of the deal where sometimes, you know, PCBs and plates don't, don't, uh, don't really line up too well. And when that happens and you get a little bit of warpage like this, you just, you have to just move a little slower. I know it's not an ideal thing for watching on stream. I do apologize for that. Um, but you know, it's a from an optimistic side. You guys get a little extra time here to hang out with your boy, Max F. And uh, and plenty of time to ask me any questions you may have, and I'll do my best to answer everything. Hope you're enjoying the laid-back vibes we've got going on here. Hopefully, we'll start getting my cruise control here with the soldering in just a minute. Trying to bend warped steel back into place, not as much fun. And getting into the parts of the middle of the board is really kind of difficult. How the hell do I get leverage on this guy in the middle of the board? It's difficult. It's lucky I've got such guns. It's lucky I'm so it's lucky I'm so jacked. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, chat. <laughs> Not every day that these that these giant muscles come into play. <laughs> but tonight, tonight we're thankful. Oh yeah, get a little pump in. <laughs> oh yeah, Alex, you got me. 
You got me working. Oh, he's a ship. That is absolutely the truth. Way too many sets coming out. Every month, people are just coming out with another set. It's crazy. It be like that though. People just keep designing. Designers be designing. So chat, I have to bring it up because my boy in Viz is in group by Porsche phase right now with his Igris keyboard. I don't know if you watched the build stream when we did that chat. So we built up an Igris a couple of uh, couple of weeks ago. We built up one of Invis's uh, prototype Iris. And Invis uh, is a longtime community member. If you don't know him, just a little background about him. He's a really cool guy. He's a big activist in the hobby. He moderates uh, a lot of different keyboard communities, um, among which I, I can't remember. I think I know he's a moderator in the main Mech Keys Discord. I think he's been a moderator on Mech Market or maybe RMK at one point. Invis is just a great all around, all around guy. Commits a lot of time to the keyboarding hobby. Anyways, he designed his TKL, the Igris, which is a board we built up on stream. You can find all the details about it on my YouTube channel, as well as the VOD probably on Twitch, maybe too. I'm not sure. I know the VOD's on YouTube as well. Anyways, his board is in group, I think. And I was stoked. Um, he's coming in at around $420 on the dot. So, nice. It's actually a great price because with tariffs and everything, you're not really getting anything out of China for less than that right now unless you're taking a loss on your board. And so his board is probably somewhere in around that 300 and some change price point, a very reasonable price for a key. Correct? Correct. And he makes the post on Reddit and people are giving him all sorts of shit. You know, of course I say people, plebs who don't know much about keyboards are giving him shit. And, and, you know, of course the OGs are all chiming in like dope design, you know, I'll definitely cop this, that sort of thing. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, if you, if you have the time, head on over to his group, buy it, you know, and, and, and consider it. I'm not saying buy it, but consider it, you know, you do your own thing. Y'all are, y'all are masters of your own destiny. Um, but, but I felt like that was a pretty well-received board on stream. And, uh, and it's just annoying when I see people like, you know, calling out like, you know, and make it and talk in the bash. What keyboard does this anyone have? A link. Um, yeah, so the board is the Igris, the I G R I S V1. It was made by Invis Invisibility. Um, and uh, yeah, we built it up on stream here. Yeah, the post really kind of got out of hand. It was annoying. It was annoying to see. Um, and, and Invis put a good amount of work into this thing. Um, it, it is basically an homage to the OTD 356.2. And uh, chat, let me tell you, for those of you who are OG collectors, which of course the 356 and uh, the DGE edition, both of them super ridiculously difficult to find. I mean, these keyboards sell for like $4,000 and up um, and, uh, and are true collector's pieces. This is, it's not a clone, but it's pretty close to it, right? Um, you know, with some, some new engraves and a little bit of a twist here and there. I mean, it's a nice keyboard. I've used the DGE. I used the DGE side by side with the Igris, and the Igris is a very, very nice implementation. Um, it's it's a simp It's there's beauty in simplicity, and and people, of course, and you know, they miss that, right? They see cone feet, and they're like, oh, what a cheap cop out. I'm like, that's not a cheap cop out. That was a design choice that he made, and it's just aggravating to see people talking shit about something like that when they have no idea what they're talking about. And so, anyways, I don't want to harp on it too long. I don't want to dwell on negativity, but, um, you know, my heart just a little bit. So I wanted to call it out. And if you guys feel like supporting Invis, if you feel like making a, a, a post on the thread and, you know, trying to spread some good vibes and positivity, please go for it. 
Um, please don't shit post on it. <laughs> I'd ask you if you don't like the design, just keep your keep your bad vibes to yourself. <laughs> um, but but if you like it, you know, consider it and maybe you know. And four hundred twenty bucks is expensive. I get it. You know, so it might not be in the cards for you. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I'm not speaking to you, chat. I'm just speaking in general. I get it. Four hundred twenty bucks is a lot. And people see a super simple rectangle and, and they get, you know, they get enraged, I guess. And they feel the need to post on someone's shit post on someone's thread. It's, just, it's crazy. I don't know. What set am I talking about? I'm actually not talking about a set, my boy. I'm talking about the Igris B1 keyboard that we built up. It was linked up there uh, by Izashu. Um, it was linked up there. And, and uh, yeah, it's just the thread kind of turned into a debacle, if you ask me. Um, and it's a shame because Invis is a great guy. I'll put it this way, if it hits MOQ, I will have a Igris headed my way. If it doesn't hit MOQ, I might try and reach out to Invis and see if I can still get one made. Um, because I liked it. I liked it a lot. It turned out really nice. It felt really nice. And, uh, you know, I, I love those OG cone style boards. Um, yeah, it's just, like, it's just the fact that it's just a simple rectangle with no weight, no crazy design, you know, it's just, it's simple. But it's a great implementation of the, you know, the keyboard, and I like it. I don't think I've ever had to do the Wogan method on an entire keyboard. I don't think I've ever had to go quite like this before. So chat, um, I know I'm kind of bitching and moaning about the fact that I had to put so much effort into this. Uh, I don't think that you would run into this issue um, with a production model. Um, this this was an issue here where they actually had to dremel it. So I would assume when they dremeled it, maybe the board warped just a little bit. Um, so that's my assumption. I would assume you would not have to deal with what the issues that I'm dealing with right now on a production model of this board. So fear not. All right, I think we're in the clear. I think these switches in the middle now. I've got a good enough contact point. I'm not seeing them. I'm not seeing them push out now when I push them in. So I think I think we fixed the warpage by uh, by sheer persistence uh, and, and willpower. So let's go ahead and finish up the street. Or finish up the solder. Ooh, two hours and forty five minutes. Long dance money. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. All right, so I'm sorry if I missed things in chat. I'm trying to keep up. Um, honestly, people are way too obsessed over things like bottom weights and designs. You don't even see it most of the time. Yeah, right, exactly. It adds unnecessary cost and complexity to boards. At the same time, it's clear enough. Right, 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 exactly. And that's not the point. That's the, that's the main thing. It's just not the point of that board. Um, you know, you get, you get 50 keyboards designed every month that all have crazy amounts of complexity and design. And here comes one in a year where you haven't had anything like this. And the dude gets a bunch of shit for doing something different. I mean, it's the same. KMAC has done boards like this. OTD did boards like this. Philco did boards like this. It's nothing new there, but it's refreshing in a year where there's complexity on top of complexity on top of complexity in every keyboard build. And, uh, and here's, here's something that's just a simple rectangle. And here's the thing, I built it with Gary's, and I have an ogre right now built with Gary's. The Igris felt as good, if not better, than the ogre, and it sounded better. Now a TKL naturally will sound better, but the ogre sounds phenomenal. 
And so the fact that the Igris sounded as good, if not better, and it felt as good, if not better, and sounded better, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's nutty. It's a great, it's a great sound. Like, so if you have a simple board, it has to hit on those two notes. It has to sound good and it has to feel good. And Igris does both of those things. So in my mind, that's a win. Then it just comes down to the price. So anyways, I'm not going to harp on it anymore. Just consider it if it's something you're into and, uh, and yeah. And shame on shit posters. Shame, shame. Let's see if I can put this one in the middle here. Yeah, that's a stretch. Okay. See what our spacebar sounds like here midstream. Yeah, I was just worried that like the warping of the plate might cause the uh, might cause the. Uh, stabilizers to sound off a little bit but i think we're i think we're in the clear chat i think we're okay um let's let's proceed i think we're okay all right so i've i've soldered just about one of every pin in this damn in this damn keyboard now uh so now it's just time to hit up the other pins um so let's go one row at a time we don't need to push anymore I'm done being keyboard strongman for the night. I'll be honest with you, chat. There's uh, there's more of the switch showing on the outside than there is in the middle still. So despite all my efforts of getting new switches as flush as I can, they're still popping up a little bit in the middle. Hopefully it's not enough to notice. I mean, we are talking millimeters here. So I mean, hopefully it's not enough to notice. Hopefully from an aesthetic and sound profile, everything is good. And I mean, I, I, we are talking millimeters here. I really don't think this is gonna cause any fitment issues with the stack acrylic. Um, you know, I think we would have to be a little bit more warped than this for that to be an issue in my mind, but, but we'll see. Pray on that too, that we don't have any issues with fitting the acrylic stacks on this. I'm pretty sure we're going to be okay, but man, I wish that, I wish that palm plate worked out because that would have been much easier to build with. So let's hope we've got a good result here. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't, there's nothing more I could have done here. Doing that, doing that Woden method is, is really what was necessary. Like I had to, I had to hit the corners first. And if we're not pushing down anymore in the middle, it's because the plate has no more room to give in the middle. You know what I mean? We're like out of room for it to move on the edges. And so pushing straight down, there's no more slack in the middle. So well, let's see, we'll hopefully be back. Um, I don't really associate with keyboard hobbyists outside of Twitch for that reason. RMK and uh, Geek Hack get pretty nasty at times. It's true, he's a shoe. Yeah, it's true. Twitch generally stays pretty positive. More often than not, it's pretty positive. I, I encounter very rare negativity in my channel. It is very, very rare for my moderators to have to like jump in. Wouldn't you say, Raz? I would think it's very, very uncommon. Um, occasionally, people will get a little bit too excited and spam, but I mean, it's like positive stuff. 
I'm just like, I'm just like, all right, cool. I get you're excited about this, but maybe slow down the messages kind of deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's, it's never really something negative. Uh, yeah. yeah, the negativity is really disheartening across anyone designing manufacturing the board. It's not easy. Uh, yeah, so uh, Muhammad, we were talking about uh, Igris, the Igris V1 keyboard. Um, and and uh, Invisibility is uh, the guy who created that, designed that, uh, and, and his latest group buy uh, for that keyboard is just getting uh, a lot of shit in comment sections. Um, a lot of people are being negative and, uh, and, and sharing their negative opinions and, uh, you know, it's, it's just something I don't understand. Like, you know what I also don't understand? I don't understand the downvote button on Reddit. Like, why are people downvoting things? Like, <laughs> I mean... I, I get it, you know, sure, okay, I get it, but at the same time, I just try and imagine me downvoting something. I think the only thing I've ever downvoted on Reddit has been, like, reposted memes after it's been reposted on a subreddit, like, ten times. Like, but I hardly, like, but I don't actively go through and do that, like... Even if I see a reposted meme, I just like scroll past and I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. That was a little bit of a waste of my life. I wasted, I wasted two seconds there. But then it's like in and out of my mind instantly. Like hitting the down vote button is one extra second of my life wasted. Imagine going to the comment section and dwelling on negativity and posting negativity in the comment section. That's like wasting five minutes of your life. And then you come back and you like look at it and say, hey, has anyone replied to my negativity? It's just an interesting way of living your life. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I definitely fall into negative trends from time to time, but I just can't see myself on the internet doing that kind of thing. Nobody wants to hear my negative opinion on something. Uh, Max, when I press the right alt key, the two control and the other alt key triggers as well. What do you think is causing this? It sounds like something is shorted out on the PCB. I would check to make sure your stabilized keys, uh, the, if they're screw-in stabilizers, I would check to make sure the screw is not bottoming something out. Downvotes were originally intended to be used for posts that do not contribute to discussion or are not appropriate to a certain sub. Yeah, absolutely, this is true. I mean, in that instance, it makes sense. Like, downvote, get something out of there, right? Um, Right, but then yeah, when you when you use it on something you don't agree with, I think it's kind of just defeating the purpose a little bit. And plus, people overuse it too. I think people go through and like get salty about something, and then like you know what, people aren't liking my post enough enough. So let me go ahead and downvote everyone else's post. Do you guys remember that that high school meme? It's not enough that I should succeed; everyone else must fail. <laughs> Do you guys remember that? It was like the high school quote underneath the kid's senior yearbook photo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you have a picture of the back of the PCB, you can probably find the short. Yeah, yeah, that well that too as well. Yeah, yeah. So I mean I was just I was just suggesting the stabilizers to start. Um yeah, obviously we can troubleshoot it a bit more as well if uh, if we're digging into it. Dude, more coffee, please. Oh yeah. What's up, brother? Uh, so MCP, you're looking potentially at the last stream where I will have that light box in my webcam view. My tube light comes in on Monday, I think. So if it comes in early enough, I'll install it on Monday and then we'll, we'll build on Monday with the new lighting. I'm so stoked, dude. The office looks so good, that overhead cabinet. So chat, if you've seen my updates in Discord with my desk setup updates, uh, more coffee please is my inspiration for my office updates. I took his desk setup and I put it on steroids. And by put it on steroids, I mean I destroyed what he got as an overhead cabinet by putting a hole saw to it and cutting a hole for my overhead camera and then throwing my overhead camera in a cabinet. <laughs> I think I literally just broke the stab on my space watch. No! What happened, brother? How do you think, how do you break it? What's happening? Are you sure the wire just didn't pop out on you? Yeah, the cam inside the cabinet. Yeah, I think it did turn out nice. 
I just need to get I need to get a grommet for it um, because the hole is gaping and uh, and that's what she said. <laughs> no, but the hole is gaping and there's like exposed. It's not just wood. It's the it's the particle board IKEA stuff, and so and so I definitely need to I definitely need to fill that. That's what she said. <laughs> Let's keep it going. Keep it coming. That's what she said. Just everything I say now is just a stupid innuendo. <laughs> Let's go, chat. Let's go. Two more pins to solder. Okay. All right, Ray. This is our first moment of truth. Like a big dum dum, I didn't exactly. <laughs> like a big dum dum, I didn't. Uh, I didn't uh, test our PCB first, and so first things first, we test our PCB. And hopefully, uh, everything works there. First, I'm just checking every step. I think I got them all. It looks like I did. Yeah, I got. I got every step. Okay, so if I miss something here and the PCB is not working, it might be my fault. It might be someone else's fault, but we'll never know. It'll have to be my fault because I didn't test it because I'm big dumb. All right, that LED popping up is a good sign. Me being able to type is a good sign. Escape, boom, boom, boom. This is, oh, you know what? I'm just not gonna say anything. Let's hit all of them and not jinx it. I'm assuming that's function. Yay, we did it, chat, and it's not broken, cool. Now, moment for prayer number one has come and gone. We're looking okay. Now, moment for prayer number two is coming up here in about five to ten minutes give or take i think i'm done with my soldering iron with that all out of the way so what we're going to do is tin our tip and put that away so just so it does not burn anything and then let's go ahead and Get our plate all wiped down, our stainless steel plate here. Get all the fingerprints I can off of this. Because we can see it to an extent through the face. This glove actually will get fingerprints on the steel as well. So I'm gonna take the glove off. Use the. Oh, you know what? I can turn. I can restore a bit more order here too before we proceed. Let me put this stuff away um, so I can clear my desk space off. And I can turn the fan off as well as RTX voice. So my mic quality will go up as well. Ooh, oh, would anyone have some advice for a newbie looking to make cases? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, watch Quantrick's video on YouTube. Quantrick basically tells you, hold on one second, hopefully I don't lose my mic, no scuff stream, no scuff
and we should be back. There we go. Okay, cool. We are indeed back. Okay, chat. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, chat? Are we indeed back? I'm just wiping my fingerprints off this keyboard to the extent I can. So bear with me here for just a second. I won't get too OCD with it, but I want to get them off to an extent. Just the nature of stainless steel. There's no good way to keep the fingerprints off of it. Just gotta wax on, wax off with this thing. It looks good, but man, oh day. They attract some fingerprints. Okay, we can ever so carefully now remove our stabilized keys and hopefully... Oh no, that backspace wire popped out on me too. Everglide stabilizers, just I tell you what, every time I use these stabilizers, they decide they just don't want to be on a keyboard. They would much rather be off in Timbuktu or wherever the fuck they feel like being. It's not on a keyboard though, I'll tell you that much. These stabilizers. And this is a difficult one. Backspace is a difficult one to get to. Hopefully none of the other ones popped out. Enter still looks good. Did this one stay on intact? That did. No anti-wire pop-out technology. Time to desolder the whole board. No way, Jose. We'll get it in there, Raz. But I'm telling you, this is a difficult one. This is a difficult one here. Yeah, I don't have any leverage point on this. What can I do? Aside from just grabbing it with tweezers and pulling as hard as I can. Yeah, it's like not even, mm. Chat, you're in a tight spot on this. So this is not even ready yet because this needs to come out. And this guy needs to go down. Yeah, exactly. That is pretty much the worst case. Okay. I've got it in the proper socket in the stabilizer now. Easiest to turn it upside down. Go ahead from here. Forgive me, chat. You're going to see a, a back of my head stream for a second. Just need to get, normally you can get just a little bit of the edge. And once you get that, then you're golden. Once you get just a little bit of the 90 degree. Wow, this guy's playing tough to get. Mm-hmm. 
supervisors. headaches tonight chat there were definitely some headaches tonight all right it's right there and I have it yep I have it in both sides slip up over come on slip up over Get in there. Chat, it's not it's not getting into the spot. I'm sorry. I do apologize. here on this side. That's true. Troubleshooting stabilizers is boring though. <laughs> There's really, there's really nothing to it. So let me zoom in for you here. So what I do is you get just the tiniest little bit of an edge on the stabilizer. And I'm sorry, I have a little bit of lube right below it. You get this the tiniest little bit of an edge on that backspace of the 90 degree angle in the wire. And once you get that little edge in the 90 degree angle in the wire, you try and get your tweezer, you try and get leverage between your plate and that 90 degree wedge, and then kind of pull one of these numbers with the tweezer where you go like this. And then if you can get it, you can leverage it up and over the plastic and into its proper spot. It's just a lesson in patience and nothing more. Just, I mean, you'll be at it for five minutes working this thing. All right, I'm gonna try it with this two straight ones, see if that gives me a little bit of a better leverage point. It's in the right spot, I fucking see it. It's in there. I have it on the right, I have it, or it's close on the right, but it's not coming. Let's try going with the left first. Yeah, it's there. Why is it not pushing in? <laughs> That's absurd, chat. It's absurd. So if I wanted to get at this thing, I would need to desolder from the front. I would need to desolder more than the pipe because the pipe isn't going to cut it because the stabilizer is going to be in the way. The alternative method, and this is gonna ruin our, this is gonna ruin our, uh, backspace key. But we can do a super loop spot treatment on this. We'll be okay. Um, we made it to the end of our playlist. Huh. More jazz. You have a mini flathead bit from an iFixit kit. Sometimes one of the prongs get way. That's true. We can try it. 
I do. I have a mini, yeah, so the mini flathead. We can try the mini flathead. Let's see. That might just do the trick. If you remember all those fingerprints, we just wiped off the plate. <laughs> Oh, it's so close, it's right there. It's out on both sides though, so like I can't even get one in. And despite my efforts on the left, it's really the right that I think is causing more issues. pushed it down. And I wonder if this guy popped out because of warping on that plate. Compelling content, I know, chat. Let's try this. Let's pick this side up. Can I get the switch puller under it? Nah. No, that would be too wide. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. Well. Fuck me. I give up. Um, this is not fun. Here. Thought we were done with the soldering iron. Apparently we're not. I've had enough. Had enough fucking around with the bullshit. Let's just get it done. Because fuck you, delete key. Oh, Everglide stabilizers. Of course. And that didn't come through properly. One joint not through. That one looks okay. are not pulling get the whole joint out come on there we go that one pulled who posture max posture yikes That's not, that's not out. There's still solder in the deeper part of this joint here. So sometimes when you're desoldering, you won't be able to pull all the joint out. And it is easiest when it's the solder that you can't pull out is deep in the socket. It is easiest to touch more solder onto it and try again. And there is a couple instances of that in this run. Now, chat, I'll be honest with you. I'm just pulling out every switch below this backspace right now. I don't know which ones. I don't know which angle I'm going to be able to come at this thing from. I just want to get south of the backspace with a, uh, with a, with a screwdriver. And get the leverage to push straight on with this stabilizer. Now it's this is this is delicate because we're coming at we're coming at this thing going over two other stabilizers. And so we need to get the switches out of our way here, but we need to be careful that we need to be careful that we don't get the other stabilizers popped out now at this point. Now I mean everything all the all the obstructions that you know we can get will be out of the way. Uh, when we go to do this, however, it's just, it just doesn't make it any less of a pain in the butt. So anyways, um, now we should be able to, I'm going to try it from this angle first, just going in right, right over the other switch opening here. Here, let's get one of the longer pronged screwdrivers that I have. A flathead, preferably. There we go. This guy's a small little flathead. That screwdriver was made for this. Okay, let's see here. That's not long enough to get to it. So yeah, I've got to get to it from this side here, from this vantage point here. I've got to get to it through this hole or this hole. I'm going to guess this hole right here is going to be the easiest. The problem is I've got this thing lifting and pushing forward. I really can't 
see the other side. Let's see. Something in the housing bin? Is this housing bent? Is that what's going on here? I've I've literally I don't know if you can see chat I've literally pulled the space bar or the backspace wire all the way down I pulled it all the way down and out of the way I'm, I'm taking a visual inspection right now of the actual housing of the stabilizer um, and and making sure that I have I have points here that it will clip in and I can't really get a good view on the other side but it looks visual inspection looks okay there on the left and right this is not ideal not an ideal thing to have happen chat not an ideal thing you know what i'm going to do Here's, we're gonna do two things. So here's a, here's a little tip. If this happens to you, we're kind of forced to do a little bit of a spot treatment here. Our wire's all jacked up. I mean, we put a really thick coating of lube on these wires when we do this. So the wire's completely out of the housing right now. It frees me up. It frees me up to use this here. So we're gonna use some super lube here. Super Lube is a really easy applicator for inside this housing. What I'm going to do, you can see I have this wire. Look at the backspace wire. Look how far I have it pulled out. I'm going to pull it out even further. It is completely out of the housing right now. We're going to insert a bit of Super Lube into each side here. And then when we push the wire in, it's gonna catch that lube and push it back into the housing as well with it. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. My desk is a complete mess. Thank you so much for the prime. Thank you for the two months there, uh, Marksy. I appreciate that. Hopefully the sub will untilt you. Hey, hopefully. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, now that the lube is in there, I'm, I'm on the right track, right? Am I, am I back on the right track? So I think, chat, what I suspect is happening right now is that we're running into an issue with one of these housings. Um, uh, the, the stabilizer housing, I think, is potentially bad on us. Okay, is that in the right spot? That's in the right spot there. Okay, we got good movement on both sides. Hopefully. That's in. That's in right there, chat. On the left. The left side is in. Just need to get the right side in now. Oh, it's the right side. Is the right side in? Chad, I think we did it. I think we did it, Chad. I think we did it. Why does it feel? We did it, Chad. We did it. Okay. Does this happen often with Everglide steps? Yes, it does. You have to be very, very delicate with the housings and wires. And not only that, you also need to take heed of 
plates that potentially are uh, like this. So, so the stainless steel plate is a bit warped. And so because of that, um, because of the warpage on the plate, it's it's putting pressure on points of the stabilizers, right? That not might normally not have that. And so if there's the pressure placed on the plate, kind of pushing and pulling the stabilizer wire around a little bit more, you know, it might take a little less for this wire to pop out now all of a sudden because of that. Um, so yeah, I think that I think that really is is maybe is maybe adding to our, our troubles here. Um, Hopefully, once we get everything in place here and lock down the case and keycap carefully put on it, then you know we'll we'll just be mindful of it and careful, and hopefully we don't get any more wires popping out on us. That would be the most ideal thing. No more pop out wires. Uh, if you get C3 stabilizers, you won't run into this. C3 stabilizers almost have a complete connection to the uh, to the wire almost enclose it they almost enclose it completely i was thinking it was warped from the heat and deduced from polishing that that would be funny yep i polished it just soon well actually right is it what you're talking about from the machining from the machining elements polishing the the stainless steel um that's potential, yeah. Duroc V2 also have a fix for that. Yeah, 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 that's what I've heard, Sutra. So that, that, that as well would be nice. So we're using the breathe out method because I'm not putting my fan back on. So what I do, when I actually touch the solder to the board, I breathe out and away from me because you don't want to get cancer. Lung capacity helps. Please, no surprises, no surprises, no surprises. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, please let us be done with my iron now. We will be so very careful with you, stabilizers. Okay, please let that backspace not sound bad. Please let it not sound bad. I passed out for an hour. I just finished soldering. Yeah, no, no, no. We didn't just finish soldering. Um, we actually ran into a, a, a popped out wire with our backspace and so we had to troubleshoot that for probably probably the last 20 minutes um, if not more so now we're back to polishing one more time so all right to-do list we're gonna polish the PCB we're going to get this in the acrylic stacked layers. We're going to dress up GMK terminal. And we're going to get some glorious typing sounds on this thing. I'm going to get all this debris off of my desk here in two seconds. I would normally take a little bit more time, I think, with the polishing of this board, but I'm going to move a 
little quicker, and I'm not gonna get as OCD on it. So we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with it like that. Okay. All right. Let me put away all the soldering stuff now. Whew. All right. Fun times. Fun times, chat. We're back. Good vibes. Bring on the good vibes again. Let's go. Let's go, chat. Let's go. So now, if I were a more impatient man, I might have taken a break there. But it's all good. With a popped out stabilizer, I know. I'm going to get it back on the right track. I know, I know. But if you feel like you're getting a little bit angry when you're soldering something, if your desoldering maybe is taking longer than you'd like it to, if you've if you've just uh, if you've just popped out a wire of your own on your stabilizers, just take your time. It's cool, baby. And if you need to, hop up and take a break. Because the last thing you want to do is get angry and then like you know destroy a keyboard for no reason. These are not the Rock V2s. These are Everglides. There were so many Michael Scott, there were so many possible Michael Scotts were trying to work that wire back in. Oh yeah. We just had to get it in the hole. I was trying to get it in the hole. It just wouldn't fit. This is really hard for me. <laughs> yep, you're, you're you're coming in at an awkward time, sandpaper. <laughs> but but all you need to know is that is that we succeeded in getting it in the hole. All right, fun times, fun times, fun times. All right, we're done with our filthy mat on. off my desk. That's right, only fun times. No, no other room for anything other than fun times. Okay. Let's see here. How difficult is the stacking of this gonna be? I'm gonna go off of, look at that chat, oh my goodness. It's, it's beautiful. I'm gonna try and use my microfibers as much as possible here. Okay, all right. All right, this is gonna be a lot easier. So what do I have here in terms of hardware? Looks like I have a full set of hardware here. And a sticker. Oh yeah, look at these, baby. More stickers. So the trick to acrylic layers is do everything you can to not touch them with your fingers. Everything you can. Gloves are really helpful. I wish I had gloves. Yeah, Protozoa, Protozoa Studios, this keyboard. Oh no. I lost my other points. Kind of.
I put just enough pressure on it. It not being a flat case makes it difficult. So this is the part chat, remember when I said uh, this is not going to make for good viewing content? Putting stacked acrylic together is kind of a, a finicky process here where I don't want to touch it too much and I want to use gravity to let these things kind of like hold them in there. Try building it upside down. place here using this. This was the top piece right here. 
They are. Yeah, these are GID infills on this guy. This guy right here. There we go. There we go, chat. We did it now. Now we've done it. does indeed have a foam layer. We're very close, chat. We're very close. Thank you so much for bearing with us here, chat. I love you guys. A little bit of a West Coast special for people up in chat tonight. Gens at. Yeah, we're all up late. Everybody out here on the East Coast staying up till 1 a.m. <laughs> hey, you guys aren't strangers. Y'all are some of my best friends. But, uh, but no. <laughs> nah. Look at me now. 
started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now the whole key fam here. You know, when you're when you're messing around in the matrix, sometimes it just takes a little bit. You can't you can't rush these things. You know how it goes, chat. Good morning. That's true. It is now 1.17 a.m. Hardware doesn't have an issue. Let's see here. That one is good. I hope it's not this point. <laughs> I feel like my entire adult life has been. I never imagined I'd be insert life event here. Ain't that the truth? been there brother I think we've all been there Still repping at 1 a.m. Apparently, my West Coast people don't like me. No West Coast, no West Coast people chatting up in here. They must still be waking up. There we go. Okay. Oh, it feels so good to have all these in here. Oh no, we have one that's not in there. <laughs> I literally just jinxed it. I was like, oh, it feels so good to have all these in here and I have two more. West side. This is absurd. This is such an absurd looking keyboard. This is awesome. I hope everything lines up properly. Oh, let's go. I hope the port, I hope the port's good. Come on. Let's go, chat. Let's go. Do it, I'm right here. All right. You never want to torque plastic. So you always want to be careful when you're doing these last little adjustments. I really just keep it light. Really just keep it light on the any last minute adjustments here. Just a quick little hand torch. Imagine just a quick little hand torch as opposed to like what using a drill max, what would people be doing? Imagine using a drill to screw in an acrylic keyboard. Chad, it's here. Yeah, you don't want to rub too much with the uh, acrylic and definitely with nothing other than a nice soft microfiber. Oh yeah, the port cutout is deep, but I think it's it's good. It's lining up well, but it is deep. Let's see if my cable fits. Oh yeah. Oh 
my goodness gracious. That's absurd. All right, is anything bottoming out here? Oh, end key, you scared me there for a minute. Don't do that to me. I thought the end key wasn't working for a second. Beautiful. All right. Chat, it's time for some terminal. It is. This is a stainless steel plate. Mm -hmm. oh, first, we hydrate. I'm gonna get a. Uh, I'm gonna get a nightcap before going to bed tonight. Whew. Acrylic builds stress me out. I'm always so nervous. I'm gonna get them like all scuffed up. What's up, Brim? Good to see ya. Let's see. But let's see, let's see. Now nah, we're good. Okay. Blood and steel has redeemed hydrate. I'm all about that life. Let's go. It did turn out absolutely incredible looking. So as I mentioned, they make me nervous, but man, did this turn out really good looking. Let's just hope we have no issues with the warping of the plate. I think we're fine. The, the, the looks okay to me so far. Let's see here. We will find out. So put keycaps on here if everything is sitting pretty. That's such a cool board. Okay. I'm going to be so careful with your stabilizer. So good. It's perfect. For the spot treatments that we had to do on that delete key, I am very pleased with that. I mean, stabilizers sound good, chat. Do you hear that thing, Raz? That delete key? Ho oh, ho ho, yeah. Made me nervous. Wait, what in tarnation? Oh no. The key set didn't get put back properly. Every single one of these just needs to be moved over one key. That's hysterical. Like looking at it, I'm like, why is there a pipe key here? And then I'm like, oh boy, that's not right. So chat, we'll talk details real quick. Uh, the switches 
We're tuned up with, I painted these stems with a 3203 and a 106 mix. So I mixed those state or mixed those lubes together, the oil and slightly thicker, slightly thinner grease. And then I painted the stems. And then I did uh, I did GHV4 on the rails actually of these housings. So it's, it should be an interesting mix. I just kind of wanted to play around with the loop here and it felt nice. It felt nice as I was playing around with it. So hopefully these switches sound good. I think so far so good. We'll find out. The full result here soon, of course. But so far, so good. You know, that's what you gotta go for sometimes, Nanu. You got the you got the crazy one off. You gotta you gotta send it. You gotta full send it, you know? You gotta go in. Oil, oil grease combos sometimes have a little bit of a break-in period, but I mean, we're talking like a day or two, you know what I mean? Like, so you might, you might find that like it settles in after a little bit and then it really sits nice. So if you do that sort of a thing, just don't, don't be alarmed if like instantly it doesn't feel perfect. It'll get better feeling as it goes, you know, kind of deal. And page up and page down. Look at this case, chat. Oh my goodness. This thing is absurd. So chat, you taking the blue pill or the red pill? Are we staying in the matrix or are we breaking up out of here? I combined both pills and some and you put some and you put some lube in there too lubed them up and then combined them and then we bag lubed them we bag lubed them pills or better yet we got the spray super lube we spray super lubed those pills <laughs> oh my. Whew. It's past my bedtime chat. I'm an old man. Psych, I'm gonna play some video games after this. <laughs> Who's playing cyberpunk? I mean, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Take care of business. I'm not that old chat. I don't need I don't need anything like that yet. You have to be Destiny 2 before you can start Cyberpunk. Boom. Look at this chat. Ooh, would you please look at that. Whew! Hot diggity dog. Gosh, that sounds so good, chat. Holy moly. <laughs> I'm 
There it is indeed. Yeah, right? Seriously. Sorry for the fingerprints. Yeah, yeah, so the, C the PCB, the Mysterium PCB forehead, it will, it will go right through that. Now, we do have one other thing we have to showcase. Because we're not done yet. You're in for a bit of a treat here, chat. Prepare yourself. Oh my god. It is toxic. This thing is toxic. That is absurdly cool. Will it glow in the dark? Um, you're not gonna be able to see it if it does. I don't think so though, but man, it is it is toxic. Wait, there's blood stains. Is this CSI? Crime scene investigation. Oh no, my gaff mat. All the stains on my gaff mat. <laughs> no, I'm <just> kidding. <laughs> That's so wild. That is so wild. All right, let's see what it listens. Or see what it listens. Let's see what it listens like. How well does this thing listen? A keyboard even Keanu would consider breathtaking. This is, this is the glitch though. This is the, is this the deja vu? See me build it once. If you see me build it again, just know there's now a glitch in the matrix. The agents have changed something. We might be in trouble. So absurd looking. Whew. All right, let's get some uh, sounds up in here, chat. It is time. Y'all have been super patient. It is time. We gotta get the terminal theme on, of course. Go here, go here. there is it centered I believe it's centered pause this it is indeed time let's do this it does doesn't it it looks so it looks so good it looks 
It looks smashing. Absolutely smashing. All right, let me move this aside. With how my mic is currently, I need to move my monitor over a little bit every time I do the sound test. Kind of annoying, but it's whatever. There are worse things in life. I just have to move my mic a little bit. There we go. Get a little closer. There we go. All right. Yeah, right. Isn't that isn't that great looking? Oh my goodness. Okay. All right, here are your mods. Beautiful. These alphas are thocky. And somehow the space bar is clacky. The plate is stainless steel, which is interesting in this full acrylic case. I think that's why the space bar sounds so clacky. It is high. Let me raise my chair up a bit. It is a high angle. Pretty wild. Help me decide 60 gram swings for Gatteron black inks uh, or stick with the 80 gram bottom out. Uh, 60 gram for sure. Go later. I always like later. Um, it does. It feels nice. It feels nice with the, with the tangies. I like this combo of, of lube. forehead on this thing is so cool looking it's absurd it's absolutely absurd wow uh very cool very cool all right so we've got time enough for some closing thoughts here um what do you think chat how did that sound it feels it feels really nice the tangies are shining on this uh on this plate this stainless steel plate i was a little concerned with uh, with putting the tactile on the stainless steel and it feels nice. 
Uh, this is not a personal board. Nope, this is a board that we built for uh, Uliam. Uliam is on. Uh, Uliam is on Instagram. I saw. I actually followed him today on Instagram. I've not. I've not seen him uh, up until today, actually. But I, so I don't know what. I don't know what. Uh, I don't know what sort of a presence he has in keyboards. Obviously, I mean his his logos on the underside of this thing is it's pretty cool. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it, this is a build for him. Uh, this is his board. It was a pleasure to be involved in this. Um, I'll give you guys a quick background just real quick. Um, so Ectoplasm reached out to me. Uh, he is one of uh, uh, he is one of the members of the team that is Protozoa Studio. Uh, reached out to me, asked me to be involved in this uh, beautiful keyboard, um, and uh, and and yeah, I mean I uh, of course obliged. Um, this originally was to sell or to uh, promote the start of the Nightwalker switches. So, uh, chat by all means, if you are interested in a Duroc switch, glow in the dark, um, consider Nightwalker. Uh, obviously, we haven't tried them yet. Um, I do not have any prototype copies of these. It's why we built this keyboard with Kiwis. I think Kiwis really match this build perfectly. Um, but of course, the Nightwalkers would fit right in on this board. Unfortunately, though, we just couldn't get those before uh, this build was ready. Um, and so this is kind of like a promotional piece for Nightwalker, but then also Protozoa Studios and the, the P00 release of this keyboard, which is not set in stone. So if this is something you guys would like to see, if this is something that you'd be interested in, um, then uh, then definitely head on over to Protozoa Studios. They're linked here as well um, in the build command, and uh, and and send them send them a message, contact them, say you know, hey, look, I watched this on Max's stream. I'd, I'd love to actually get a copy of it. I'd love to I'd love to purchase one. You know, um, you know, and and I mean, I'd say I'd recommend it. I mean, it is an awesome board. It is a higher angle. So the one thing to note. Let me go back here to the keyboard screen. So the one thing to note, this is stacked up pretty high. Do you see that? Um, I kind of have it at an angle here too. Let me unplug it real quick. So it is, it is stacked up a bit high. So just keep in mind this angle here. Now I don't have crimp on, so I can't tell you exactly how how wide that is. Um, but but it is it is a little bit wider. So um, I would probably recommend maybe doing like a wrist rest on this guy. Um, but man, oh man, is it beautiful. Um, and ectoplasm originally thought that this might be just a single one-off with no additional units made. He's making some very tasteful edits to it for a non-Matrix version, and he is also potentially going to release a buy for the Matrix version. Um, so we also have Microwave in chat, as well as Alex. They're both from Protozoa Studios. So by all means, chat, let's take a couple minutes here. And if you have any questions about this buy or anything else from Protozoa Studios, be it either the Nightwalker switches, which the group buy ends tonight on, or this keyboard, the P00 keyboard, feel free to jump in and chat at me. That way I won't miss it if chat starts going quick and, and we, can, we can turn those questions over to Alex and Microwave and, um, and, and maybe get some of those answered for you. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, otherwise I would say, and I'll give it, I'll give it until one, it's 145, I'll give it until 150 on questions, um, unless we really start to get them rolling in. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, I'd say, I'd say otherwise, this was, this was a fun build. Acrylic stacked builds always take a minute for me to put them together getting all these acrylic layers stacked properly without me getting my fingerprints and mitts all over it. I, I really like to move slow there. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, as with all keyboard builds, it's kind of just fun. Take your time, enjoy it. And uh, I enjoyed the process of building this. Now keep in mind, this build would have been prefaced with a Mysterium forehead build as well. Don't forget that with this keyboard, you really will have a lot of fun wink wink doing all the through hole soldering that is required for all those diodes and resistors and everything else but at the end of the day i mean look at what kind of result you get you get this mic you get these microcontrollers and chips and diodes and resistors and everything all visible on top of this acrylic layer i mean it looks absolutely smashing really really cool 
Um, yeah, I mean, it looks it looks so good. Um, so let me let me one more time too open up for you the details from ectoplasm that he had sent me, and uh, and then yeah, I will I will go back in here and double check for questions for Alex and Microwave if they miss anything. A Alex and Microwave, obviously, if people ask questions in chat and all tab, please jump in and yeah, feel free. I want to do this. Show this. Alright, so here are the proposed details for, did I not have the ability to open this? Come on, give me, give me the ability to open this please. Alright, well I have the renders, I'm going to show you guys the renders here in just a second. I wanted to take a screenshot of this and not have it. I guess we can just open it up in here. <laughs> open it up in paint. How how boomer is that? Okay, any rattling on the mods? I have to break in the backspace a little bit, but I think the backspace is good too. We had to do a lot, a lot of work with the wire on the backspace. Um, so, but yeah, no, I mean, that was, that was no big deal. Um, the other mods, no. The other mods sounded pretty good to me. I mean, I, I tested those pretty, pretty thoroughly. If you didn't catch it. Um, all right. So here you go. Here's the. Here are the details for the buy. Okay. So. So there's two different options, right? That that ecto uh, plasmatic is looking at running. There's the P00 cyberspace glitch, which is going to be similar to what you are looking at here. It's gonna be the acid green edge glow acrylic layers, the three millimeter acrylic plate. So not the steer, not the mirror polished stainless steel. It's gonna be the three millimeter acrylic plate. It's gonna be an etched Hangul re matrix rain with the glitched side profiles. You see how it has all the little cutouts here on the side profiles. That will all be with this top buy. It's gonna be a cut with CNC, including the countersunk hard Hardware and soft round edges on the bottom and top. So the soft round edges on the bottom and top. Yep. Uh, and then uh, interchangeable collectible badges that will work with our ranges. So, so the badges he's talking about putting on the bottom here. So the badges, the Protozoa logo would have cutouts for the badges there on the bottom, which would be pretty cool. Um, and then the other one, the P00 Mysterium, which is I'm about to show you as well. Um, yeah, no, so I don't know if it would have the, I don't know if they would have the GID infill um it would i mean i'm assuming he's saying he's saying it would be the etched hangul matrix rain i'm assuming he's going to be doing the gid with that i'm not 100 percent though um so so maybe more details to maybe more details to follow on that um yeah raz isn't the backspace funny we had to do so much work on it. I was so nervous about all the lube and then super lube saves the day. Um, and then now I'll show you renders of the P00 Mysterium classic version, if you will. So it's gonna be the sandblasted polycarbonate frosted layers. The top layer is clear and it'll be a 1.5 millimeter plate instead of the three millimeter plate. And then you'll have a different interchangeable logo and positioning for that. So take a look at the renders here for the logo. So there's, there's where the logo is proposed on the Mysterium as opposed to the glitch. And you can see the side profile is, is just a straight flush design as opposed to the glitch quote unquote side profile design. Here's another look at the overhead for it. Let me zoom, uh, let me zoom in here. So, yep. Pretty darn cool, if you ask me. Lots of fun building this thing. Ended up beautiful. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I mean, there's something to consider. Like I said, join up in Protozoa Studios, hit them up, contact them, and, uh, and yeah, keep an eye on their website for future updates on this. And tonight, you still have time, I believe. I believe vendors are still running the Nightwalker set, but that officially ended tonight at 12 midnight. So you are working on borrowed time on those Nightwalker switches, if that's your thing. Anyways, 
Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I know tonight was a little bit of a longer stream. We're about four and a half hours in right now. Is anybody else streaming at the moment? Do we want to raid anybody? We got Tim Keyless. We got Dr. Uru. Um, it looks like Tim Keyless and Dr. Uru. We just raided Tim the last time, so let's raid Dr. Uru tonight. Uh, let me just make sure there's... No one else. I think that's. I think we're gonna go to Doctor Uru. Yep. So, oh, is Doctor Uru running a subathon? Is Doctor Uru doing a special stream? That's exciting. He's got a, a subathon command. If he's not running one, he's talk, thinking about running one. Subathon on the 18th. Nice. There we go. All right, everybody. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. And we will be live on Monday with, I think we're going to be building a K maybe. I can't remember what I have slated for Monday, but we'll figure it out. You'll have to follow to find out. There you go, chat. Let's raid Dr. Uru. Boom. Okay. Just closing out, did I miss any last questions for Alex or Microwave? I think. Okay, so Microwave says, as far as I know, the limited run glitch will have the GID infill. So there you go. Um, raid message has to include Soju. Okay. Let's let's tell let's tell Doctor Uru to uh, to join us in uh, in a little indulgence here and uh, and and drink some soju with us. So how about how about that for the raid message? All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful weekend. We will see you live Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Until then, later, everybody.